All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today we start again with uh, our topic about Islam, and I hope today we will have some Muslims are willing to call us. Uh, let me be sure first that my Skype is on, so in case there is any Muslim uh, would like to call. Uh, you know, as you see, the title is about why Allah he did the plastic surgery for Muhammad. Now we are not joking, we are not making fun, we are just asking a serious question because this is exactly what happened in the case of Muhammad. According to Muhammad's story, or his version of his story, and as usual there's no witnesses except him, uh, that uh, two angels, they came to him and they cut uh, his stomach pieces you know and they uh, you know they uh, you know they cut his belly off and they wash his belly and I don't know I mean this story is really weird so maybe today we will find some Muslims who they are willing to call us and tell us exactly what is behind this story I mean what the purpose of this thing why God he needed to send his angels and the angels they will do what they will do a plastic surgery for someone he claimed to be a prophet of God uh, don't forget please just to copy the link of the uh, broadcast and share it with your friends in Facebook Twitter wherever you are so more people they can you know they can join us uh, the story of uh, Muhammad chest you see, there is things we can take it in a metaphorical way, but obviously, not even Muslim they take it as something metaphorical. The Muslim themselves they accept it as something real, happened for real. Something Muhammad he practiced, it's a real event. Two angels they came to him and they cut his chest. The question, the simple question is, based on the story why that thing happened you know when we when we see something happened and uh, we are claiming that this has happened because god he made it happen we need to ask what this god he is trying to do you see when muhammad he went to the seven heaven as the muslims claim and always there's no witnesses and then he went to Jerusalem and no witnesses so what was the accomplishment of this journey nothing what exactly happened you see everybody keep asking Muhammad for a miracle and when a miracle happened nobody see it because going to heaven is a miracle going to the space is not something a human being can do and not only that, going back and not going back to the earth right away to Mecca, going back and land in Jerusalem. And now the Muslims, they claim that Jerusalem is their city, and even though we know that this is a stupid claim, have no uh, base on it, except the dream of a madman. He imagined things happening. We will not discuss with Muslims today about Jerusalem. We spoke about it already. However, any Muslim is more than welcome to call me and prove me wrong, in case he can prove me wrong. But the question is, why the angels of Allah, they cut the chest of Muhammad? What was for? Do we have any Muslim from those who they are listening? If I am a person who claimed to be a prophet of God, and then I say to you that there's two angels, they come to me, they cut my chest from here to here, and supposedly uh, from my throat all the way to my testicles. And then after that, they did uh, take off my stomach and my heart, and they wash it with the water of Zamzam. And then after that, they brought with them a dish made of gold and this dish is full of faith and wisdom what exactly 
I'm trying to say to you any Muslim can tell me what's up what like what the point of this story if you think about this story I believe strongly that this story alone is enough to prove that Muhammad is a madman if he is honest if he is honest about what he saw obviously this man he is an illusionist. You know, he see things nobody see. Nobody see. It's a it's a fiction in his mind. It's real. So there is one of two things. Either it is fiction, fabrication of Muhammad, or Muhammad is imagining. Or Muslims, you have to give me a reason why this has happened. You see, you Muslims yourself in your Islamic books, we never heard in your Islamic books any prophet sent by Allah. Allah did the plastic surgery for him. So why Muhammad? Is that a defect in Muhammad? So Allah, he need to fix the defect? Because usually we make a surgery because we have a defect. Like if you have a heart problem, that means you have a defect. So the doctors, they have to open your chest and fix the defect which can cause your death. So what was exactly the defect of Muhammad? which cannot be fixed except by a surgery any Muslim have an idea anyone as usual Muslims are you know people who they are copy paste but they have no idea what 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 what, what, what nobody I mean why Muslim don't ask themselves what's wrong with this story isn't it obvious that there is something wrong with this story? Do I need to be a genius to notice that there is something stupid in this story? A, sur a surgery is done only to fix a problem. And obviously, this is what happened. There's a problem. If we read the story together, I'm just, I'm just waiting, hoping that a Muslim will call us so we can read the story together, you know? Uh, they opened his stomach and then they took off his heart and then they washed it with the water of Zamzam. So what we understand from this that the heart of Muhammad was filthy dirty. Why? Why Allah did not need to wash the chest of Moses? Why Allah did not need to wash the chest of Isa? Isa, he took him to heaven too, right? And according to Muhammad, Moses is in heaven now. Adam is in heaven. Why Allah did not cut their chest to make a surgery to wash their chest? Why, he, you know, why, why Muhammad? What is special about Muhammad? What's the problem with Muhammad? Because obviously here there's a problem. There is a problem here. The surgery was not done to practice uh, plastic surgery for the sake of a beauty. Like what? Muhammad, his, his, his boobs were small and Allah is making them big. So what this is surgery for? Do we have any Muslim here have an answer? You see, there is a verse in the Quran. It says the following. فَمَنْ فَمَنْ يَرِدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُهْدِيهِ يَشْرَحُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ وَمَنْ يُرِدْ أَنْ يُضِلْ لَهُ Okay, what is the translation for this? Anyone Allah He wish to guide, He uh, you know, He open His chest to Islam, <laughs> and anyone He want to misguide or deceive, this is what the word Yudilluhu mean, He make His chest narrow. 
as if he is coming going up to heaven which is scientifically wrong because when you go up in the space your chest expand you have a problem with the breathing because you have less oxygen but your chest is not really getting narrow that is a stupid statement this is why if you go in the space higher and higher and higher and if you are in an airplane and the pressure in the airplane released to match the pressure outside you will be exploding your your nerves inside you they will explode why because they are expanding not getting narrow for the pressure there is less however the verse here saying that anyone Allah he wanted to guide he opened his chest to Islam oh, this is anyone 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 even you supposedly huh okay why Muhammad his chest is not ready to Islam but he needed a surgery hmm? any Muslim can tell us Any Abdul? Islam and Calvinism is the same. I don't know how they are the same, my friend, but I think you are going so far. All right, I think you are wrong. Islam is Islam, and Calvinism is just an opinion. You know, it's just an opinion of some people, but it's not a religion by itself. All right, so don't mix things together. Don't don't do don't do shish kebab. Huh? Don't me do falafel, hummus. All right. You know, sometimes people they throw like uh, they throw rocks without knowing what they are talking about. What does have to do with this? I have no idea. So, do we have any Muslim here would like to give me a call and let me know what's happening? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Calvin Calvinist says God is denied people to hell. Um, they do that. I don't think this is what they think. Is that really what they think? Well, my idea about that is different. Uh, maybe there is many thought of this uh, belief, right? <clears throat> uh. Because if, if God he just denied people to go to hell, uh, that's mean God is not justice. Uh, so so what the point of uh, you know? Uh, it doesn't make sense. But I don't think this is what they believe in. I think you are maybe quoting some because you know people they sometimes they have the same title, the same idea as a title. But if you go in details, you will see that they believe in something different. You know what I mean? Like sometimes uh, when you say like a Protestant, you think all the Protestants are the same. No, sometimes you say, uh, you know, like it's a title, but there is many people go under the title, but it's not really necessarily everybody of them believe in the same thing. All right. But don't mix things. There's still Islam is Islam. If somebody have a wrong understanding of the Bible, that will not make him the same as a Muslim. Not even close because somebody believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, he is not equal to somebody believe in the stone. If you kiss it, is going to forgive your sin, and you have to pray to a God, his name is Allah, and you have to go down to his stones. That is not the same. All right. <clears throat> People they can argue about destiny and they can say that God he can just deny things for you. Yeah, he can you know He can prepare things for for a prophet But obviously there is tons of verses saying that all your sin is judged by your free will not by your destiny So if some people have a wrong understanding this is their problem But they are not the same as Muslims Do we have any Abdul here? Any Abdul?
even if those Calvinists they say that God created some people to go to hell that will not make them the same as Muslims let me tell you my friend Islam is a collection of many religions and many ideas and mixed together so if somebody he is a Christian because for me still he's a Christian do he believe in the Father the Son the Holy Spirit yes do he believe that the resurrection is by Jesus yes do he believe that there is no salvation but by the Messiah yes he's a Christian so if he have a wrong understanding of destiny, that will not make him not a Christian. Do you understand? Uh, I'm not going to tell God what he can, or what he should do as God. He is God. He know what what to do, what not, what is right, what's wrong, right? So for us, what we care for is our belief in the Savior, and how we will be saved. The plan of God is His plan. Whatever he have a plan for us, this is his plan. So somebody have a different understanding of certain thing in the Bible, like destiny. This is not that is this is not enough to make him not a Christian for us. The Bible says clearly that the one who believe in the Father, whoever believe in me and I will live. Believe in me as what? As a savior. All right. So and then at the end you know jesus he said not everyone says to me lord lord so you have to believe in him and not to be someone who say statement but you don't believe in it not everyone say to me lord lord but the one who do his will now here you will see that this is the destiny but this is the destiny with the choice which means the will of god is not to sin that is a destiny by choice the the will of god is not to kill but you can kill still the will of God is not to commit adultery. The will of God is not to steal. The will of God is not to lie. The will of God, this is the destiny of God for you. If you choose to take it, it's a choice. All right. Now, we go back to our topic. Do we have any Abdul would like to call me so we can have a nice conversation about why Allah, messenger, be upon him, Allah, he made a surgery for him. What was the problem in the chest of the Prophet? Do we have any Muslim? Any Muslim would like to call me? You see my Skype is up in the screen. You can call me live. You do not even need to add me. Just put the name there and click and call. Very simple, very easy. Hmm? Was Allah preparing, preparing Muhammad by this surgery to be a prophet? No, because he was a prophet already. Was Allah fixing a defect in the chest of the Prophet? No, because all what they did, they wash it. They wash his heart. So what, his heart is dirty? Why the heart of Muhammad is dirty? Dirty with what? And what the heart of a man have to do? Like, you know, in the Bible we speak about the heart of the man, the heart of the man, the heart of the man. All over the Bible, there's many verses. But doesn't mean that the heart of the man is where man he make his decision it's a it's a like a figure of his speech you know what when, when you love a woman you don't love her really from your heart this is not really true you might have a, a like a, a, a extra beating when you see her because you get excited uh, because you miss her etc or because you are scared from her mother so your heart start beating like crazy because your mother-in-law she's around but that's not really in your heart, that's in your brain. So why Allah He washed the heart of Muhammad? What was the purpose of it? There's no way, there's not even one Muslim he is listening, and not even one Muslim is going to call us and show us what, what went wrong. Anyone?
I mean, what the difference between a SIM phone and card and uh, and a Skype? At least in Skype, we can get a better voice, and it's for free. If I use a phone, if I use a phone, the voice will not be the same quality. Like now, I have my system linked inside the computer, so you guys, you can hear very clearly any conversation in Skype. Who is a Muslim when I call us? Do you think of a Muslim who will not use a Skype, he will use a phone? I mean, Skype is for free. And if a Muslim don't have a Skype, he can download the Skype in two seconds. So do we have any, uh, any uh, volunteer, any Muslim would like to tell us what's happening? This is a story. If it is, if it is a true, is a proof that Allah is not God. Who can help me? Why? I want to see how many of you is going to think deeply about the text is in front of us. This is a story alone is enough to prove to us that Allah is a fake God. Who knows why? Let us see who of you is uh, is going to flip like the ideas and find find where is the error there yeah uh, what his name Islam Idyogija Dia Omachi I don't know this is what language is that he said that if Allah is God he should say be and it was isn't it the Quran says that if Allah he wants something to happen he say be is going to be <laughs> what is that? You know what I mean? What is that? Let us say for the sake of argument, Allah he found that Muhammad's chest is full of garbage. Huh? He have a disposal machine and there's a the sink of Muhammad is stuck with garbage. There's a tea bags, there's rice, there's beans, there's bones, there's potatoes, there's a lot of things. So now Allah is going to fix it. Why he did not say B is going to be? What the point of sending two angels making a real surgery? <clears throat> and as usual, there's no witnesses. So what, what the point of the surgery? Any Abdul can tell us? What the point of this? And look, you know, the story became more stupid because they made a surgery to do the, the two, uh, three things. They wash his heart, but they open his stomach. By the way, we as a Middle Eastern, our heart is in our stomach. This is proven scientifically, you know. Like all my people, the Arab, huh? all of us, we have... Uh, our heart in our stomach. This is why like if you if a woman she want there to seduce a man to love her or to marry her She reach his heart by feeding his stomach So they open his stomach to wash his heart, okay and Then they brought a dish full of faith and wisdom You see here the translation this hadith is not really accurate. The, the, the correct the correct hadith saying that they brought a dish full of faith and wisdom. Have you ever heard of such a thing that somebody is receiving his faith in a dish? Hmm? What is that? I mean, I want to know what's happening here. So, based on this story, Allah, he look at Muhammad, he examine him, he have a software. And he run the software on Muhammad and he found that there is some holes and there is some defect and some bugs. So, Allah, he decided to fix it. But because Allah, he cannot fix it by saying B, he have to send one doctor and one nurse. And he sent with them 
a scissor, a dish made of gold, and I like it because it's made from gold. I mean, it's necessarily to be in from gold. Why it's made from gold? I mean, what's the point of the gold here? <laughs> and any Muslim have an idea why it's made from gold? Is gold valuable for God? Are you saying to me, Allah, He don't use dishes, normal dishes like plastic ones? He use only gold. Uh, what, what is what is that? What does that mean exactly? Any Abdul? Hello. Who is a Muslim is willing to call us and prove us that we are we have a wrong understanding? Maybe you have an idea we did not get. Anyone? Do you remember in the Quran? The Quran, there is a word which is the word alaqa. And this is coming in the verses speaking about the creation of the human being. The same word, the alaqa, all right? <clears throat> you see, this is the word, the alaqa, appear in the hadith. Okay, what is the alaqa? Alaqa is a congealed blood, dead blood. Chapter 22, verse number 5. All right. Do you see it? It's a blood clot. You see here it says like a clot. It doesn't say that. I mean, this is a stupid translation. You know, the Muslim translation, by the way, is really stupid. I mean, the same guy, he translated the same word differently in different verse. But it's the same word. <laughs> This is the word alaqa. This is why I always I say every Muslim is dumb until he proves the opposite, and they, and they never do. All right. What the word alaqa is? Do you see it? Why here is not a like? Why in that verse is a like? I mean, what's wrong with the Muslims? <laughs> it's the same word, the same chapter. I see the same verse. It's just different number, like the, uh, because the Quran is a stupid book. Muhammad, he keep repeating things. There is no need to repeat it. You just said that already in many verses. Why you want to say it again? There is like a clot here is is into a clot of a congealed blood. All right. If we go to the Hadith, we will find this. They found in the chest of Muhammad a alaqa. Let us see, where is, I need to find it. I will find it, anyway. So they found, they found a congealed blood in the chest of Muhammad. What is that exactly? Any Muslim can tell us? Uh, look like this is will be endless. Let us uh, make it more clear. Right, hold on. Hmm. Okay. Let us see. Which hadith we are going to show you? You notice how uh, the Muslims are so quiet. Each time we do live podcast, there's no Muslims here. They are there listening, but they are dead. I mean, don't, they don't, uh, uh, you don't move. If you go to YouTube, if you go to Facebook, you will see how the Muslims, they are so active. 
how they are so brave how the much they are challenging the Christians here they are dead okay here we go this is the hadith I'm talking about hmm. uh, you see this is the word alaqa the one I'm telling you about you see it this is the word alaqa so what they took from the chest of Muhammad from the heart of Muhammad specifically actually alaqa hmm? and what the hadith says this is the part of the devil of you Oof. Oof, 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 oof. let us go to the translation so you might better get better uh... let us see if the translation is even close to accuracy all right so Anas ibn Malik reported that Jibreel let us zoom in a little bit okay that's better all right Mr. Jibril, as always, you know, Jibril is a Jibril is a pizza guy. Jibril is a is a is a pizza boy. Jibril is the delivery guy. He is a surgeon too. He's a doctor. He's everything. Okay, so Jibril came to Muhammad, and he was playing with his playmates. Here, by, by the way, I remember there's two stories. One of Muhammad, he was when he was a child, and one was Muhammad was a man, and he was a prophet already. <laughs> And here we will find that there is something stupid here. Allah, He have to do the surgery twice. I mean, what's wrong? Allah, He did the surgery twice, Muslims. Once when Muhammad was a man and He want to take him to the heaven, and once when He was a child. Why? Are you saying to me that the first surgery was not successful? Do we have any Muslim here can tell us something? The first surgery was not successful. So now Allah, he needed to make a second surgery. Okay, let it go, let it go. All right. Then this angel, he tore the chest of Muhammad. He tore it open. Look how violent he is. And he took out the heart. And from it extracted the blood, the clot, and he said, That was the part of Satan in thee. <laughs> I love it. So, Muslims, are you saying to me, if we want to get rid of the Satan and the part of Satan in us, we make a plastic surgery, we cut our chest, and we will find a congealed blood there? And if we take it off, that said the shaitan is gone, huh? <laughs> so now Muhammad is shaitan free. Abdul, Abdul, focus with me. No, don't, Abdul. No, just leave. leave. Don't, don't don't go there. When when the when the angel he took that clot, the congealed blood from the chest of Muhammad, and he said to Muhammad, "This is the part of Shaitan in thee." So now Muhammad became Shaitan free. So are you saying to me we can get rid of Shaitan by making a plastic surgery? If I go right now to a doctor and tell him, find me and please look in the x-ray and try to find where in my chest I have some blood or clot of blood. Take it off and that's it, shaitan is gone. So what shaitan for you, Muslim? Shaitan is a clot of a blood? We take it off and we are done? Any Abdul? And look, after after uh, Jibreel, after he took the clot from the chest of Muhammad, from the heart of Muhammad. By the way, if Muhammad heart have a clot, he will be dead because a clot will block his vein. You know, he will die right away. 
What a clot? Clot inside the heart? You are dead. So he take he took the clot from his chest and he washed it with the water of Zamzam. Question, Muslims. Why he wash it in the water of Zamzam? What is that? Is that a shampoo? What is the specific unique about Zamzam? According to the BBC report, Zamzam water is full of arsenic. It's poisoned. Each time you take a cup of the water of Zamzam is the same as you smoke two boxes of cigarette. So why they are watch, washing the heart of the chest or the chest of Muhammad with the water of Zamzam when it is full of arsenic? Now after they wash the chest of Muhammad, what Muhammad now? What is what? What, what happened to Muhammad now after the surgery? What happened? What happened? If you look in this story, this has happened when he was a child. And the other story, the surgery for Muhammad when he was a man. But look what happened now. If we go in the Quran, we will find that Muhammad, until the age of 40, he was a pagan man. So the shaitan is still there. So this stupid surgery did nothing. Let me show you what Allah he said to Muhammad. Uh, all right. The dump religion. As they say, garbage in, garbage out. In chapter 93 it says, وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَ he found you lost, misguided, and he guided you. But this is when he spoke to him as a man. He was 40 years old. So the surgery did nothing. The surgery did nothing. Look at the Muslim translation, how fast it is. It says, and he found thee wondering what wondering you idiots i mean muslims are a bunch of liars when they translate it says dalan since when dalan wins win wondering i wonder how i wonder why guy and all what i can see just another lemon tree i turn my head up and down i turn it turn it turn it turn it around <laughs> and all what i can see a bunch of idiots around me where it says wondering what wondering mean just to show you how muslims they lie in the translation and purpose let me open another uh, website okay remember this is chapter 93 verse number seven so we will go here 93 all right Seven, and here is going to show us all possible translation made by Muslims. <clears throat> Look at this translation. Look at this guy. Didn't he find you pre-plexed? What is that? <laughs> and he show you the way. <laughs> Didn't he find you astray? And he guide you. This guy is trying to make it look nicer. Astray? It doesn't say astray. It says he dalan. It's more than a stray. Then, and found you deeply engrossed in his love. What? Look, what? 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 <laughs> look, guys, look at the translation. Every translation is like they have nothing to do with each other. Did he find you? Did he find the earring? Mean that is deep. Did he find you lost? <laughs> Didn't he find you wondering? Didn't he find you unaware? <laughs>
What do you mean I know we are? Like he what? He lost his direction to them in the map. What do you mean I know we are? There's a there's a lice in the top of his head. He is not aware. This is not what the Quran is saying. Didn't he find you unaware of the right way? If, 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 if. Look, 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 guys, look, look how one word became a sentence. Like, didn't he find you unaware of the right way? What does that mean? <laughs> ah, you see, when a Muslim he translates the Quran, he is not translating, he is trying to defend the stupidity of his book. As simple as that. Look at this guy, Muhammad Shakir, and he found you lost between two brackets. That unrecognized by men, like what? If a person is lost, that means he is unrecognized by men. Are you sure? <laughs> so look, look here, look how the how translation became upside down now and guided them to you. But this is not what the Quran is saying. The Quran says guiding you. Do you see it, guys? Do you see how the translation switched in, in, in the speed of light? Look, look at the lies. Look, look, look at this. Here it says, so he guided. He found you lost. He guided thee. He guided thee. Huh? He guided you, Muhammad. Huh? Direct you. Now here, look at this guy. This guy, he make it totally different. And he guided them to you. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh boy. Muslims are very truthful and very honest people. We have to admit. From every 99 lie, there is additional 99 lie to cover the first lie of each one of them. Oof. Oof. All right, all right, okay. By the way, do you know when Muslims they read for you Quran in Arabic? They are not reading Arabic. Those who they are not Arab mostly, they have a Quran like this. It says, "Wajadaka dalan fahada." So, like you, know, you when you hear him speaking to you in YouTube or in uh, internet, you think this guy he speak Arabic. They are reading this. They are reading this, not this. Hmm? Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? No, we talk about many stupid things in this earth, my friend. We are talking about Muhammad because he is not really the topic. The topic is you Muslims are a bunch of stupid. How you can believe in such a thing? You see, Muhammad is dead anyway. The, the miracle is that you must then believe that there is a prophet his God made a surgery for him to install inside him a dish of faith and dish of wisdom This is what we are talking about Otherwise this guy obviously is a scam And because you have no answer you are sitting there saying the whole world is talking about our prophet because they are talking about your prophet because he's a criminal and you because you are his followers are people who kill like yesterday how many people you stab in Netherlands are you proud this is why people they speak about your prophet otherwise nobody is interested in your versions we know that it is a lie So do we have any Muslim here would like to tell us what happened with your prophet? Obviously, your prophet is a person who is infected with a lot of illusion. He is mentally ill. Even his sex have no witnesses. Have you ever heard of somebody have sex but no witnesses? Even the wife was not there. Listen to this. I say to you, yesterday I had sex with my wife. And then you speak to my wife. She say, oh, no, he did not even touch me yesterday. Uh, what about the day before? Not even that. But even the month before? Not even that. What about the year before? Not even that. So Muhammad was having sex with who? Narrated by Aisha, not by Christian Prince, that the Prophet continued for such and such a period of period, imagining, what, what, what? Imagining that he has slept 
between two brackets had sexual intercourse with his wives all of them this guy imagine with all the women but in fact he did not isn't it this is enough a proof that Muhammad is a mental person huh how he can be a liar and madman in the same time well madman they lie too who said to you they don't lie are you stupid or what your logic is a stupid if somebody is mad you don't lie since when <laughs> <laughs> you see the Muslim answers is kind of comedy if you are a mad person you don't lie you do when you told people that you had sex with your wives but in fact you did not it was imagination that it's a lie you told us a lie when you say to me yesterday I have boom boom with my wives all of them right I got the power of 40 men and then we find that you did not even touch them that was a lie so either you accept that he is a professional liar but a stupid one or he is a madman who make lies and then get exposed for them now as long Muhammad even his sex was a imagination what about seeing an angel is it possible that Muhammad was imagining to? Obviously, possible. Hmm? Any Muslim can explain to me what happened to Muhammad when he was imagining himself having sex with, but he was not? He was holding what between his hands? The pillow? Jibreel? When Muhammad imagined himself having sex, Obviously, it feels it feels so good, like it, as if it is true to the point he believed he did. So he was holding what? Huh? What is the Muslims? What you what's happening here? Explain to us. According to the story, Aisha she is saying to us. <clears throat> A mad person cannot see the difference between truth and lies. Okay, hold on. Are you sure, Abdul? Are you sure, Abdul, that a person, a mad person, he cannot make a, the, the difference between the truth and the lie? You see, when somebody speaks about mad, he is talking as if the word mad is used only for someone who is totally lost his mind. Mad is anyone he don't behave in the proper way normal person behave have nothing to do with losing your mind totally do we agree guys as an example there is somebody is mad and what he do when he want to poop poo poo he take off his pant and he do it in the street obviously he's mad that doesn't mean he is totally mad he know how to go home he remember the names of people around him he go and buy his grocery, but he do stupid things. He's mad. He make wrong decisions in the wrong time. So a mad person, not necessarily is someone is totally gone. Somebody, you know, the way you are talking about a mad is somebody he cannot recognize anything. That this guy, he recognized his wife, Aisha, as an example by name. He know uh, the names of his friends. Hmm? Uh, he know that uh, he need to shake his penis three times and this is a very wise thing it's a sign of wisdom actually because if you shake it four times it might came up hard came off so now what is your explanation for this your prophet is not mad so what he is Abdul do you have an answer your prophet is not mad two angels they came to him and they took from his chest shaitan dirt Explain to us why Allah needed to do that plastic surgery to take the shaitan dirt from his chest. And the Muslim knows. We will go with the Muslims. They say he is not mad. Okay, he is not mad. So what's wrong? 
Then Abdul. What Allah here trying to fix? The defect is Shaitan a physical piece of blood? We take it off and Shaitan is gone. Hello. Quran, he say say he saw Gabriel. Well, I, you know, yesterday I saw Gabriel too. <laughs> I mean, you know, you see, they ask they ask him who is Jibreel? Who is the guy who is there? This is the Hil Kalbi. He said, No, this is Jibreel. Muhammad, you see the Hil Kalbi. Do you want me to show you the hadith? He never saw Jibreel. He saw a guy, his name is the Hil Kalbi. He is very well known, handsome boy from Quraysh. And obviously, there was a relationship between Muhammad and the Hil Kalbi. So they ask him why. They want to ask him why this guy is late with you at alone. So he, in order to give an excuse, because it's fishy, why this man is sitting with Muhammad alone until late at night? He said, "This is Jibril." Is that correct? <coughs> oh. Let us see. Da 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 Do you see it? Do you see it? Dahil Kelby Jibreel, he looked like Dahil Kelby. Why? Why, 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 why? Huh? Do you see it? The angel of Allah and Allah could not find a look of his angel except a, a look of a guy who look who live in the neighborhood. And he is the most handsome boy. And obviously, he and Muhammad they used to share their sex object together. Why? Any Abdul? Send him an angel in this in the look of a man, good looking man, no problem. But why in the in the look of the Hil Kalbi? Let me find you. Here we go. Guys, read with me. Does it say that? Or I'm making things up? Read with me. Read with me. Read with me. La 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 la. Oof, that's deep. A lot of knowledge there. This is Sahih. This is what? This is Sahih. Don't tell me it's weak. That was Jibreel, peace upon him, upon you, who came down in the form of the Hyal Kalbi. Do you see it? Abdul, do you see it? Why Jibreel, he come in the look of a guy, he always stay in the house of Muhammad, he is a very well-known person, he is one of the com a close companion to Muhammad. Obviously, there's a relationship between them. He could not find the other person. Look, so he cloned the Hyal Kalbi. Why? So now we see the Hyal Kalbi in the street. We would think this is Jibreel. <laughs> oh boy! Ah. <laughs> oh. You know, first time they found Monica Lewinsky in the in the office of Billy Clinton so late, he said, "This is not Monica. This is Jibril. He came in the image of Monica." <laughs> oh boy, 
Jibreel, huh? This is Jibreel. It must be a true story. Huh? What is that? Who is a Muslim would like to call us? Call me in the look of Jibreel, in the look of the hell. Tell me I don't care. Show me what's happening. Why Allah He made a plastic surgery for the Prophet? Why the plastic surgery was a must and needed it twice? Well, Allah He made two surgeries. He made two surgeries for Muhammad. Once when he was young, and once which means he was a child, and once when he was a man. Why the first surgery was not successful? Hmm? Why? Any Abdul? Allah, he made a surgery for Muhammad when he was a child. He took a clot from his chest. And that supposedly the clot will make him shaitan free. So why the Quran says later after Muhammad he became a prophet that shaitan he throw in his mouth satanic verses. So what the benefit of this surgery? Huh? My my Skype is open. Who said my Skype is not open? It is open. Nobody is calling. Don't worry. Be happy. Muslims only call me after after I I uh, I log off, <laughs> and they leave me a message says to me, "You are a piece of a crap, garbage." No, cowards. I am online. My Skype is on. Call me. You do not need to add me. Just give me a call. Give me a call, and Allah will give you all the versions He promised you. <clears throat> no, I call your prophet. I'm not the one who is calling your prophet a crazy. It's your God calling Muhammad a crazy. Hold on, hold on. You see, the Quran says. That Muhammad was accused by his family and his tribe that he is a crazy. Do you agree? Do you agree, Mr. What's your name? Murtaki. Murtaki. Did the family of Muhammad accuse him that he is a crazy? Yes or no? Yes, right? The Quran mentioned that six times. About Muhammad, actually more, but uh, as I know that his family, like tribe, the of Quraysh, they spoke of him as as a crazy man. I think six times. So you are a crazy, and they said that to Muhammad. But you know, let me ask you a question. If somebody he say that I had sex with my wives, but in fact he was imagining, do you think this is a sign of him being crazy, or not? What do you think? If a person he came to marry your daughter, be honest, huh? And then he is already married. He have two, three wives. You know, a Muslim he have the right to marry four women, as you know. Okay. So three of his wives they say that our husband, the one who is going to marry your daughter, he imagined himself having sex, but in fact he did not. What do you will say? You will say he's crazy, don't you? Well, give me, give me a title. What you will call him? What you will call him? Any Abdul? <clears throat> Hello? Taking hashish, maybe? And you see, I'm not judging because they call him crazy. I'm judging because what the story says, the proof it was that uh, he's crazy and Allah Allah he confirmed to Muhammad in chapter 52 verse number 29 <clears throat> 
that you know what you are not crazy <laughs> why I'll need to confirm that Muhammad now let me show you something to prove that Muhammad is crazy hold on if we go here we will have a clear evidence that Muhammad was a crazy man Uh, no, not this website. Hold on. Let us go to the hadith. Where is the hadith? Uh, okay, here. If I ask you right now that there is somebody I know he tried to commit suicide many times, what do you think that is a as a behavior? Is that a crazy behavior or? A behavior of somebody is a stable what do you think any Muslim want to answer is it true that the hadith says that the Prophet of Islam he tried to commit suicide many times read with me please but after a few days Waraka died And the divine inspiration was post. Why it was post? What waraqa have to do with Allah? Obviously, Muhammad was copying from a book of waraqa for a while. Why for a while? The Prophet becomes so sad, as we have heard, that he intended several times. How, how many? Several times. How, how many? Several times. The reason I'm repeating because the Muslims are so slow, excuse me, to throw himself from the top of the high mountains. And every time he went to the top of the mountain in order to throw himself down, Jibreel would appear in front of him and he speak to him as a brother Zakir Naik. And he said to him, Brother, brother Fitter. When the brother Warakad Nufal he died, the Prophet became so sad. It's very normal. Because the relationship between the Prophet Muhammad peace of him, Sallallahu Alaihi and Walaka because it was like like this. No, no, not like that. Like, like, this, like this. Look, look at this. Yeah, like that. So the Prophet became so sad. And he decided to go to the high mountain. The reason he decided to go to the high mountain, because first of all, he was trying to practice. Some kind of science. He fly, he experience flying, and he can come down with some theory, like about how to make an airplane. Example. So the prophet he went to the top of the mountain and he decided to throw himself. However, he could not do it. Why? Because Allah don't want him to do it. Otherwise, we will know how to make airplanes long time ago. So the prophet he went to the top of the mountain. Each time he tried to do that, the end of the breeze bit upon him. He appeared in front of him and he said to him. Khabibi Muhammad, Khabibi Muhammad, don't do it. Muhammad Khabibi, you are a trolley, the messenger of Allah. Are you stupid, Muhammad? Don't do it, Muhammad. You are a truly a prophet of Allah. Don't you notice? Like, what the heck? The angel appeared in front of him and he said to him, Don't do it. For sure you are truly, truly, truly the prophet of Allah? Is that mean Muhammad was trying to commit suicide because he himself don't believe is a prophet of Allah? Obviously, yes. What the angel appear before him and say? Read with me. Oh, mommy. Oh, mommy, Muhammad, you are indeed a messenger. Oh, mommy, 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 oh, mommy, mommy blue, Muhammad crazy. So then after he said to him, indeed, 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 brother, you are a messenger, Muhammad, he cooled down. <sighs> wow. Whereupon in his heart, would become quiet and he would 
calm down and return home. So what the plastic surgery did? Muhammad, after the plastic surgery, is still an idiot. You see, when the hadith says that Allah, he made a surgery for Muhammad, what is the difference between Muhammad before the surgery and Muhammad after the surgery? Nothing changed. Why somebody is a prophet of God trying to commit suicide many times? Unless he is a madman. Look, the Muslims, they are not, you, there's no text no more in the text. Look, the text is dead. The Muslim now they play dead. <laughs> hey, Abdul, are you there? <laughs> I fear there are looks on your locks on my heart. Let me show you how stupid you are. Don't you say that, don't you know that Allah is the one who put the locks in our heart? Guys, I want to show you how stupid the Abdul. Look what this guy he said. Look, 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 look what he said. Look, 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 look. I mean, every Muslim is a donkey until he proved the opposite. I'm not insulting, I mean it. They have no idea what is written in their book. Do you see what this guy is saying? I'm showing you that, that chat. I fear, brother, you are you, you, there is a locks on your heart, and the shaitan has deceived you, people. Not as carefully what he said, he said, the shaitan. What if I show you that the one who deceived us is Allah and the one who put heart in our or luck in our heart is Allah? Let me show you, Abdul. In a second, you will be sorry for what you said. Dump, Muslim. Dump. Let us go here. The Quran said that it is Allah who put a lock in our heart. Yes. And he is the one who deceived us. And he just admitted that the one who do that is shaitan. Do you believe it? Do you see it? Chapter 2, verse number 7. This is why I say every Muslim is a stupid until he proved the opposite. Allah has sealed their hearing and their heart and their eyes. <laughs> so why you are saying shaitan, he sealed our heart? When the fact it is Allah according to your book. Hello? Hello? It is you you are looking for. This is why, my friend, I called my my first book. It's called the Deception of Allah. Why I call it the Deception of Allah? Because the Quran saying with many verses that Allah He deceive us. This is how stupid this religion. The Muslim believe that Allah is the one who lock our heart. He deceived us, he misguided us, he ear like he, he caused us to go in error and misguided, and then he will judge us for his decision. Not only that, the Muslims believe that Allah before he created us, he decided our sin. If you remember, when Adam you want to get my book, Abdul? Go to Amazon.com and search for a Christian Prince, you will see the list of my books. I am the nightmare of Islam and nobody can debate me and if they do they will be sorry according to Muhammad that there was a debate between Musa's and who and Adam Musa's he said to Adam, because of you, we are out of heaven. Because of what? Because of you. What does that mean? Moses, is a, obviously he believed in the original sin. And that's clear, evident, 
that Moses cannot be a Muslim. The Muslim they say to us that the first stupid thing the Christian believe in is to believe in original sin. Islam refused original sin, and as you see, this is Musa, Moses, the Muslim, huh? believe in original sin because this debate happened after he died, not before. <laughs> as you know, Moses and Adam never met. There's long period before be between Adam and Moses, so where they met supposedly in heaven. So look, look what it says. <clears throat> all those hadith are sahih. All of them. The prophet said, Adam and Moses argued with each other. Oof. Oof. I mean, things is getting serious here. Things is really messed up. Two prophets are debating because Adam, remember, he is a prophet for the Muslims. He was a prophet for his wife. You believe it? Anyway. <clears throat> so, Moses, he said to Adam, O oh Adam, you are our father who disappointed us and turned us out of paradise. Then Adam said to him, O oh Moses, Habibi Moses, Allah favored you with his talk. He talked to you directly, directly, and he wrote, the Torah for you in your hand with his hands do you blame me for action which Allah had written in my fate 40 years before he cre my, my creation what the heck the sin of Adam is not the sin of Adam it is the sin of Allah and look Muhammad here he take the side of Adam he says so Adam confuted Moses Adam he is the winner so the, the, the what Muhammad is saying that the argument of Moses was weak stupid the argument of Adam was the winner so what is the winner saying that Allah he wrote the sin and the fate of Adam 40 years before his creation so you cannot blame Adam for the sin of Adam for this is what is written by Allah so why Allah punishing us have you ever seen more stupid religion like this why Allah kicked Moses from heaven if he is the one who wrote for him his fate 40 years before he created them and Muhammad he agree we cannot blame Adam for his sin for this is was his law what was his his, uh, his fate and you are telling me Muhammad is not a crazy man so either he he is a liar and he is a crazy in the same time he lie about this debate there's no such a people they met where they met explain to me how Adam and Moses they met where in the city hall Did Allah take Adam from the grave yet? According to Muhammad, in different hadith, he said he is the first one Allah will resurrect from the grave. So what Muhammad, what, what, what Muhammad is talking about? What Adam and Moses are doing there? If Muhammad is the first one to be resurrected from the grave, what this guy is talking about? However, the important for us about this is story that. Moses believe in the original sin and that is against what Islam is about and this is after his death and now Moses in heaven blaming Adam for what happened and Adam he don't believe that even he commits sin for this was the sin of Allah and he was right according to Muhammad and you are telling me that Muhammad is not a stupid madman so why he told you go and do Hajj and do Salat and go visit the Kaaba and kiss the black stone if at the end of the day this is all will not do any different what is the point of this if my sin is written for me before I am created 40 years before my creation why I want to be a believer in Islam and why I want to worship Allah because 
it is written already you know if you remember there was there was a, a child who is an infant he died and he is a Muslim child which means a son of Muslim man Muslim remember Muhammad he said everyone is born as a Muslim anyway <laughs> even you and me we are born as Muslims according to Muhammad so a child he was he passed away Aisha she said that this is a child he is happiness for him he will go to heaven Muhammad he said to her don't say that you idiot for Allah created for a hellfire the dwellers of the hellfire and for those to paradise the same which means even though he is a child of a Muslim family even though he is born as a Muslim as Muhammad claimed for every child is born as a Muslim even though he never commits sin even though he never reached the age of sin yet Muhammad he he believed that this is child still it is possible he will go to hell and as you see this is the Sahih Hadith in the front of you this is Sahih Muslim and this is Sahih Muslim and this is Sunan al-Nisai and this is Ibn Majah and this is Al-Bukhari I mean read it uh, this one is different hold on actually here the story is about the child who they, they cut his head you remember the story this is a different story we'll talk about it now, later So this child, he did not do any sin yet. He did not even reach the age, the age of doing sin. Yet, according to your prophet, it is high possible that he might go to hell or it might go to heaven because Allah, he created for hell, people of hell, before he created them. <laughs> so the whole, the whole idea of not committing sin in Islam to go to heaven is a lie. This is a child. He is a child of a Muslim. He is born from a Muslim family. Muhammad claimed that everyone is born as a Muslim. He never commits sin. He is an infant. Why it is possible he will go to hell? Give me a reason. Any Muslim can tell us? So this is the wisdom of Muhammad after the plastic surgery and after they install in his chest a dish of wisdom. Do you see how much wise he is? I mean, this is a hell of wisdom. <clears throat> huh? This is a prophet of God? And this is a wisdom of a prophet of God. That a child who never commits sin, he might go to hell. Jesus says the opposite. Jesus, he said, if you don't turn to be the same as those children, you are not worth of entering my kingdom. So the idea of, of a Christ of justice is clear that you have to have a heart of a, a child person who loves everybody. Who is not doing wrong because he is intentionally trying to do wrong, but he have a he have a good heart. He's a child. He's innocent. So, your prophet saying that a child he will go to hell. It doesn't matter if you commit sin or not. Actually, in different hadith, Muhammad he said that if you don't commit sin, all people. If you don't commit sin Allah is going to wipe you out with people who commit sin he will destroy you he will what he will destroy us why because we did not commit sin what <laughs> are you serious yes this is what Muhammad said if you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you and replace you. Why? Why? 
one day the messenger of Allah SAW recited this ayah and if you turn away he will replace you with other people then they will be they will not be like you why Allah will replace us because you need to commit sin and you need to ask for forgiveness what's wrong with this God do we have any Muslim would like to call us any Muslim would like to make our night exciting who is going to show us that we are ignorant about Islam who is the Muslim want to teach us the wisdom, the beautiful prophet? You see, the reason, by the way, Muslims they cannot debate me because, but this is just between me and you. I, I, I you know, I install a dish of knowledge and wisdom in my chest, but just this is between us, okay? So a Muslim, when he come here, he said to himself, "This guy is going to beat the hell of me. I don't know where he got his dish of wisdom from." A prophet of God he got a dish of wisdom what and not only a dish of wisdom a dish of faith huh <laughs> what, what since when faith is something to install I can install faith I bring a dish with me full of faith this is what God do this is how Allah he guides somebody to Islam he he sent his angel he cut his chest and he installed a dish of faith and a dish of wisdom oh this is a stupid statement Muhammad he said Huh? Actually, there's a hadith. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, you know, the angel, he hold his uh, what? What they call the finger? The the, the toes, the toes, the, the the finger, the big the the thick finger in your uh, uh, in your foot. Hold on. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find it. Oh boy, I mean this hadith is full of fingers But this is not the one I'm looking for Now let us see <laughs> I don't really know yeah, the problem here, this website is really stupid. I mean, you search for something, you find a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, you find a lot of stupid things. Uh, maybe it's not here, this website. So the angel, he hold him from his toes or his toe. I mean, what's, why he hold him from there? So he cut his chest, he installed a dish of wisdom, he installed a dish of faith and then he hold his toes what hello <laughs> oh my. Uh, let me show you the the hadith where Muhammad he had the plastic surgery when he was a man we showed you the one when he was a child this is when Muhammad was a man the messenger of Allah S A W S said the roof of my house was made open while I was in Mecca on the night of Miraj and Jibreel descended 
he opened my chest and washed it with Zamzam, the water of Zamzam. True story. Then he brought the golden tray full of wisdom and belief and he pured it in my chest and then he closed it i'm so glad that he closed it i mean imagine the chest of muhammad is still open exposing the knowledge he have to all the flies in the neighborhood i mean that would be horrible and he took hold of my hand and scanned it to the nearest heaven i thought he took you with that flying donkey you see the story here is different where's the donkey here he he forgot about the donkey totally the flying mule so muslims what happened now muhammad after the surgery what he exactly he become what the point of this surgery The finger of the feet is called the toes. Yeah, oh, thank you. I think you guys, you have a very long delay, huh? Any Abdul, wanna tell us what's happening? Who is going to call us? Who is a Muslim? He is going to witness for us that is a true it is a true that angels of God they make surgery for a prophet and they install in their chest wisdom and faith hmm? so why you Muslim you say to us that Allah is almighty he can say be is going to be and why Allah he needed to do the surgery twice once when he was a child and once when he was a man the one in front of you when he was a man hmm? guys do you think when I was a child my parents they did a surgery for me I'm you know I, I start being suspicious about this because I'm wondering where I got all this from I was number one in my classroom. By the way, I was the only student in my classroom. Mm -hmm. This is why I was number one in my classroom. I mean, I don't know why people are laughing. I mean, show respect, please. Please show respect. Okay, hold on, hold on. I will give you an example. Okay, don't, don't, don't lie. Don't, don't. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I was number one in my classroom, and I was the only student because I was a very good behavior student. To the point they give me a classroom alone. No the teachers there too. Isn't the Quran says in one of the chapters that Allah is the best of the creators? If Allah is the only creator. How he can be the best of the creators? <laughs> so my friend, I was the best in my classroom and I was the only student, so show respect please. It's obvious. He is the only creator, but yet he is the best of the creators. <laughs> I'm really worried about this madness. He is the only creator, and the Muslim this right away they start explaining to you. They say to you, "Okay, don't you hear about the one who created Microsoft? What? what? Yeah, the one who created Microsoft. Okay, what about the one who created the core? Okay, hold on, hold on. The creation of Allah is compared to the one who created a car. So Allah is saying that He is the best compared to Bill Gates." So we have now Bill Gates is God and Allah is God, but Allah is the best God who can create better. The religious term of a creation is about giving a life because the Quran says clearly what it's meant to be 
creator Allah in the Quran he said that are you going to worship someone who cannot create a fly so obviously Allah did not say are you going to worship somebody he can make a, a hammer uh, a shuffle uh, create uh, you know a bicycle he said are you going to create some are you going to worship someone or a god who create not even a fly so obviously the creation in the Quran and in Islamic religion and actually you know it's about creating life and here we go the example in front of your eyes yeah مَثَلٌ فَاسْتَمِعُوا إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ لَنْ يُخْلُقُوا ذُبَابًا Those who you worship by beside Allah or except instead of Allah they, they cannot they don't create the fly do you see it Abdul so when Allah he say he is the best of the creators he is confirming that this is about a creation and he is saying to you if you want to worship somebody to consider him as a God at least let him create a fly not a bicycle not a bed not a shelf not a building so if they are able or capable of creating a fly then okay worship them do you see it now according to your Quran my friend Muslims your Quran says that Jesus he created from the mud a bird you want to tell me that this is by the leaf of leaf of uh, Allah or not it doesn't matter it doesn't matter he is a creator he created from the mud the bird you want to say to me that the Quran is saying that Allah he gave him that power it doesn't matter first of all there's no proof that Allah gave anything because obviously Allah he can do nothing the the, the the Arab they keep asking Muhammad for a miracle and he cannot do any any miracle and look what Muhammad he did when they keep asking him for a miracle Muhammad he to get to run away from making miracles he said this uh, <clears throat> that we refrain from what make us refrain from sending miracles but that the former generation before you chapter 17 verse 59 they refused to believe in them so Allah is saying clearly he refrained from sending miracle to Muhammad so why must they lie and they say the Quran and science uh, I saw an article about Muhammad he he said to the rain come down the rain start coming Muhammad said the rain stop the rain stop if, 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 if. that's deep so what this is here about we refrain from sending signs only because only do you see why guys does it say there only does it say there only only because the men of former generations treated them as false that's that's a true lie <laughs> because the jews believe in the miracles of moses and the miracles of the prophets and many of the Jews they believe in the miracle of Jesus and they became a Christian actually all the apostles of Jesus are Jews all of them so what do you mean they refuse to believe in them why Jesus did not say I refrain from giving you miracles because you refused the miracles of a prophets came before why Moses did not say the same why Isaiah did not say the same why all the prophets did not say that The she camel is a she and she is a camel. <laughs> and she was a rock. Allah, he gave a prophet, his name is Saleh. Saleh, he told his followers, believe in Allah. So his followers, they said, okay, 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 Abdul, Allah, Saleh, oh, listen, if your God Allah can, you see that rock? You see that rock there? Okay, if your Allah can make that rock, get a bread net and deliver a she camel, and this she camel, she have to be bread net with 10 year, 10 month she camel. Like, what the heck? Then we will believe in you. <laughs> True story. Oh boy, too much hashish.
too much hashish guys do you know that the word hashish is coming from the Muslims do you know that that the word hashish is coming from the Muslims who knows what the uh, you know I, I told you before what the, what the word hashish is coming from anyone remember There's one of the Ismaili sect founder, his name is Hassan al Hashash. Hassan al Hashash, he was a rich man and he was the first person known as the assassinator. This is where the word assassin coming from, for he is the one who established what is called the assassin system. So, so this guy, <coughs> uh, he built a castle. And he was wealthy and he bring poor people to his castle free food free sex he have a beautiful woman just sleep with anyone you want open sex drink eat meat food whatever you want fruit really like like the heaven of Muhammad you just bring your penis with you then after six months or a year Every, you know, uh, uh, beside the sex, uh, Al Hashash or Hassan, he used to do like, uh, let us say, uh, a meditation time. So he sit with them and he teach them. All right. So anyway, after six months or one year, Al Hashash he will choose or one of his masters, they will choose one of those who they are attending the castle for free, who is there for long enough. And they will say to him, you don't come back unless you go and assassinate such a person. And that person usually is a person who refused to pay Al-Hashash money. So Al-Hashash he sent to a prince or a king or a ruler. He sent him a letter saying to him, by the end of this month, I want, let us say, 30,000 pieces of gold delivered to me or else. So the prince to avoid getting killed by the assassin army because his army is an army of assassin he pay the money and the one who don't Hassan al Hashash he sent one of his men which is very hard to know who is he for he is just a civilian he don't see an army so the ruler he will be walking in the town you know all days like cities are small not like now you know you have a lot of guards and things is very simple so the guy he will be walking between his guards few guards and the guy will jump on him and he will put his knife in his chest now those guys are suicidal so because they want to go back they are under influence of drugs they want to go back to the drugs and sex so he was willing to do anything even if it's a crazy so this guy he became number one scary person in the Middle East and actually he start building castles all the way from Iran all the way to the seashore in Syria and those are today is called the Ismaili sect all right and this is where the word assassin is coming from from this guy now his last name is Al Hashash which means hash hash for he is a person who provide hashish for whoever enter his castle for free and I see that al hashash is a smart person but evil and he was the same as Muhammad the difference between Muhammad and al hashash that al hashash is more truthful he gave what he promised he give you women, sex, hashish. Muhammad, he promised you things you will get after. <laughs> so the poor Abdul, he got nothing. But Al-Hashash, he give you what he promised. He have women, he have alcohol, food, totally free. It's heaven. But this is a real one. Yeah, the Ismaili, you know, we, we, they are called the Ismaili, you know. Uh, they're, I think their their leader now, he live in Qatar. His name is uh, Khan something. 
and the Canadian they praise him very much the government in Canada they use him like they they suppose they speak about them as Muslim but those are not by the way those are not really uh, let us say they are far away from anything to do with uh, Muhammad uh, they call them the other name they call them they call them al batiniyin which mean uh, they believe the Quran have outside and inside the inner so al hashash he brought those Muslims to his castle and he taught them that the Quran have an inner meaning and we go by the inner not but the ice outside you know let's say he is a smart person who was able to control a huge number of people in his time and he was able to extend and establish actually a very long uh, um, territory under his control you know <clears throat> we go back to our topic at least al hashash allah did not open his chest and in install a dish of wisdom period he was more real you know this guy was more real he is not a fiction person Do we have any Abdul here? Well, yeah, you know, you if you search for the the, the Ismaili sect, <clears throat> you will find their leader is very rich. Okay, let us see. Hold on. <clears throat> uh, let me find you his name. There is many many sect those are considered as part of the Shia they are more close to the Shia than others you know <coughs> um, so mostly they are considered as Shia And the reason they call them uh, the Ismaili because they, they claim that they belong to Ishmael, the grandson or the grand grandson of Muhammad, you know. So they claim that this is where they are coming from. Uh, I forgot the name of their leader today. His name is uh, Aga Khan, Aga something. He's very rich in, in Canada. He owned a TV station. He owned a big center. Um, hold on. All right. Let us see. This is not Ahmadiyya. This is not Ahmadiyya. Here we go. His name is a Prince Karim Aga Khan. Prince Karim Aga Khan. Let us search his name in the front of you. Here we go. This is their leader. He's a very wealthy rich. Uh, CM Murad want wants Prince Karim Aga Khan to visit Karachi annual. <laughs> anyway, this is what happens when you are very filthy rich. Even if you are Shia uh, or a sect, they welcome you for your money. Uh, 
<clears throat> this is the guy we are talking about and I think now he live in Canada uh, and he have a lot of investments in the West you know he is one of the world richest men with estimate of 800 million dollar all right uh, however you know the important about him that he is a leader of the ismaili now by the way the ismaili are not really let us say we cannot compare them to the muslims i met many of them um, their women they don't wear hijab uh, their skirt is shorter than my finger uh, they drink wine more than water uh, they don't give a damn for Allah and Muhammad is their shish kebab and they make fun of the Quran and they make fun of the Sunni and they make fun of Al-Bukhari and let us say they are out they are considered as Muslims but they have nothing to do with Islam anymore this is why the Muslims they hate them very much actually and just to add to this during the crusade the uh, the ismaili the ismaili because they were fought by almost all the muslims they were considered as you know let's say uh, friends for the crusade all right <clears throat> yeah but my finger is so long i mean come on don't take it wrong my finger is the skirt is shorter than my finger but then you know how tall my finger is come on <laughs> anyway all right now do we have any Muslim here <laughs> they are considered by name as Muslims but I don't see anything about them as Muslims as I said they don't go to mosque they don't pray they don't fast uh, they drink uh, uh, you know and the uh, their women is very free they don't wear hijab uh, I mean, you want to call them Muslim, call them Muslim, but they have nothing to do with Islam. Now, I don't know about them in different countries, like those who live in Pakistan, etc. But this is what I know about the Ismaili, that they have really, they are that they are not the same as the Shia, even though they are considered as a sect of the Shia. They have nothing to do with the Sunni. They have nothing to do with anyone. You know. Yeah. Any Abdul here? Look, look at this. His Highness, His Highness. You know, I, I remember there was a, <clears throat> once I visited. Uh, he's a kid, actually. You know, like we were like teenage. So he told me to go and visit, uh, visit him in his farm, in the village. Uh, so I went with him to his farm. And we went we when we arrived to the farm whoever we meet in the street they've been down to this guy and I was saying like what is that is that a joke he said you do not know who I am I said no who are you you idiot <laughs> honest to God I said to him who are you you idiot you know this guy is very like he's funny he look funny he's a chubby you know fat uh, you know short so like why they are bending down to this guy and he told he told me my grandfather is the light I said who your, your grandfather is who he said my grandfather is the light I said, who is your grandfather who is the light and uh, this is the first time I hear about this group and later I found out that this guy his grandfather truly he was called the light and he is the head of an Islamic sect and they worship him so he is the grandson, so they believe he is holy. And those people, his family, they don't work. Money comes from everywhere. So like, let us say your wife, she is not getting bread net. What do you do? You you promise God that if your wife gets a bread net, you will deliver a donation to the like the son of the, the, the you know, of this guy. That's because the leader is dead already, long time ago. So you deliver it to the... Uh, you know uh, the same as this guy, but this is a different sect. You deliver it to them, 
and this is why they get a lot of money every month from everywhere they didn't know even what to do with it and he told me that uh, his uh, his uncle he have an agreement with furniture companies and electronic comp companies and uh, property companies because a lot of things come in and he cannot why he can have them so what they do so they have a contract let us say with electric company you buy let us say uh, you make a promise you will buy the the prince a big tv all right they deliver the tv right away the electronic company they take it and they set again for the same sex <laughs> so the same tv is sold like 20 times <laughs> Madness, isn't it? <coughs> yeah. Now, do we have any Abdul here? Any Abdul? There is a lot of Islamic sect you guys you never heard of, and uh, there is still many sect I never heard of too. You know, there is because it's endless. You see, Muhammad again he exposed himself when he said my nation will be 73 sect what 73 sect nobody knows how many sect there are do we have any abdul commercial okay commercial go and buy my books uh, now by the way the coming of friday i will be busy so i apologize i will not be able to do the live broadcast however i promise you I will do late uh, loading maybe for a video uh, if I can all right but the coming Friday I will not be able to do live podcast just to let you know do we have any Muslim would like to call me but for sure we between that we have like we have Sunday and we have Wednesday don't worry still we have long time to go any Abdul <coughs> hello No Abdul here? Not even one? I mean, this is disappointing. All the Abduls disappear? What happened? Abdul, they became a real a rare coins. Any caller? <clears throat> <coughs> he was a praying what he was praying he was saying me Allah kill Christian prince it doesn't work the prayer of Allah is useless the Muslims are praying for the destruction of Israel for a long time nothing is working Any Muslim here? Who is a beautiful Muslim here would like to call me? Who is a true believer? Not even one. I don't know what to say. Very disappointing. There are too many in YouTube, in Facebook, but here we don't find them. They are very rare. You need to go to the museum to find one but you know if you are a person who do not know much about islam you will find them all over you all right <clears throat> any abdul We do not need to destroy the Kaaba. I mean, Islam is already, Islam is already known by Muslims to be fiction. Guys, you do not know really how huge is the collapse of Islam. You see, Islamic religion, it sounds like it is holding, but the reality is it's not. Give them a freedom, and you will see who is really is a Muslim. 
I, I will give you an example in Saudi Arabia the music is haram 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 the scholars they were preaching in the mosque for the last 1400 years the music is haram right and the hadith says that too so we know it the Saudi prince the crown prince he decided it's not haram suddenly the music became not haram it's halal it's halal halal I mean, <laughs> and now the scholars they start teaching in the mosque that yes it is halal what is haram is different <laughs> so now the Saudi they have a rapper I forgot what his name I saw it in the news he is coming to Saudi Arabia to make a rabbi party what huh what happened to all those lecturers years of teaching that uh, music is haram and bring uh, uh, you know bad things to the society and blah 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 suddenly it is halal so do you see uh, how things have changed so fast overnight? Why? Because people are desperately looking for finishing of this stupidity. Trust me, if the total population is against, he will not be able to change it. They will kill him right away. But because simply, he knew that the people they want this they are they are they are fitted up with this stupid Islam so it's time to change and now not only that the Saudi they decide to open movie theater what movie theater in Saudi Arabia are you serious <laughs> And not only that, we know that a few weeks ago or two months ago, uh, the the crown prince he allowed women to drive. The scholars they were speaking about women; they are stupid. They should not be given a car. Uh, adultery will happen. She will go with her boyfriend, and she will open her legs for the guy. She will jump in the car with him in the back seat, and they will do boom boom. This is halal, Allah, haram, Allah Akbar. The crown prince it says it's halal. Suddenly everybody agree. Where is the religion? What happened to Islam? Where is the harar and the haram? What happened? Saudi Arabia left 35 years ban on cinemas movie and theaters to open do you see it what happened so my friend to switch from halal to haram in this religion it take a signature of a ruler because this is a cult and the people are not really believers you know what i mean why we don't see millions of Muslims striking in the street in Saudi Arabia saying this is haram, Allahu Akbar, haram, death to America. Nobody is complaining because they want it. Why we don't see thousands or millions of Muslims in Saudi Arabia going in the street against women driving? Because they are feeded up with this stupid religion. You see, before before somebody is a ruler, before he make a decision, do you know what he do? Anyone have an idea? What leaders they do before they make decisions? The intelligence, they collect for them information and all the possibility of the reaction of the population. They make a very serious study before, especially if the decision is something serious. And we are talking about Saudi Arabia, so this is very serious. When it's come to some such a thing so they got the answer that the population they are going to be happy to see this has changed 
Now, why the Muslims they are happy to see such a change if it is against Islam? Do you know guys what I mean? Why somebody he claimed to be a Muslim, he is happy to see a movie theater enter in his country when this is against Islam. Music is against Islam. Women driving is against Islam. Women being alone is against Islam. So what why they are welcoming this? Because it's they are Muslims by name. That's it. They are sick of this. I will not be surprised that in 20 years from now, if this guy is still as a king, we will find that women in Saudi Arabia are swimming with their bikini. Just wait, it's coming. What kofar of for what kofar phobia? Kofar phobia is that something new? <laughs> they mix Arabic with English. That's a good one. Do we have any Abdul? Actually, you know, the Saudi society is totally corrupt. You see, they they made just they made a law in Saudi Arabia. This is new about media posting and photographing so because the saudi are very corrupt people when they see a girl in the mall this right away they start running their camera they capture what she is doing like she is sitting sitting and her skirt is showing her leg and right away they post broadcast an Instagram. like it's a it's a scandal society everybody is posting about everybody To the point they have to make a law to stop this. If you post, we are going to take you to jail. And actually giving freedom to those people is very dangerous too because they are, you know, not a qualified to have a freedom very fast. They will go nuts. They will go crazy. You know, I remember once uh, I was going to university. It's a different city. And I have a guy, you know, it's a taxi, but like you, like not not only for us. Uh, so like it's from a city to a city. Uh, so there's three three girls. For us, the trip is still to continue. So we stop in a town, in our way, and there's a three girls, three Muslim girls wearing hijab. They drop by between. All the time they were in the back seat wearing hijab. Wearing like a, a form of burqa, not burqa exactly, but hijab, and you know. Anyway, so we, uh, because they drop the, the 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 driver, he said we have to go to the like office uh, center, like garage, where office for them, so they can collect uh, additional uh, passengers uh, uh, for the three. They are they, they dro he dropped them because we will not pay for the whole taxi. Me and the other guy. Uh, we are just uh, student, you know, we cannot afford it. So anyway, we were waiting for three more people to take the back seat so we can continue. We sit in the garage in, in the office for this company and we are waiting for three passengers. And then three girls, they came back. But those three girls, they are not the same girls. They don't look the same. They are wearing short skirt. Their breast is almost coming out. Allahu Akbar. And they said to the guy, hey, hey by the way, uh, you know, uh, they called him by his name. We forgot something in your trunk. He said, no, not with me. He said, no, I'm with you. He said, no, the girls who came with me, they were wearing hijab. He said, he said, yeah, it's us. I said, what? You? We look, you know, they didn't look the same at all. Their breast is almost coming out. They have short skirt. Their hair is like, ooh, what happened? The makeup. They just left like for for you know thirty minutes. So, this guy and they told him what he what he was saying in the trip during the trip. He was talking to us. He told him some stuff. He you know so they caught for him some of his statement to prove that they are the three girls who came with us. Now this guy, we continue after that. This guy, he's a Muslim. His name, Abu Muhammad. He said, I swear by Allah, I will never let my daughter to go to university. Look at them. They are away from their family and they are a, a bunch of whore. They, it, it, just right away, when they arrive to the town, they change their clothes and they are wearing very exposing clothes and showing their butt. This is the truth. 
the second they get their freedoms they are not Muslims no more they are wearing hijab in different city here they are far away from their family there is no hijab there's no burqa there's short skirt there's big open chest hole and the boobs is coming praise be to Allah this is just an example of what a freedom can do if you want to know a person give him a freedom freedom only will tell you what this guy is about what this woman is about if everybody is going by the book and there is a punishment for not going by the book it doesn't mean they are convinced with the book but because of the harsh punishment everything is done under the table do you remember the video of the, the woman her name is foxy about how a muslim woman she stay a virgin who remember the video anyone remember it i forgot what this uh, what the name of the video but i think i have it in facebook <clears throat> uh, she made a video this is a this is a stupid uh, blonde woman she converted to islam she's a canadian uh, and she noticed the hypocrisy uh, of muslims so she made a video on youtube explaining her pain about how muslim women they stay versions and she explained how they do have sex but they stay virgin how they take it in the wrong place She's a Muslim too, and she is telling you her experience. She tells the father she is going to the library, but the fact she is in different library. So she made a video explaining how the Muslim women they stay virgins. And the reason she is making that, you see, this is what happened to those stupid women, Western women who convert to Islam. If you convert to Islam, the Muslim don't respect you they will think of you that you are a whore you are a whore for many reasons number one you betray your society number two you are a Western they think always of a Western woman she is a whore she slept with everybody this is how they think about you so this woman she converted to Islam and she saw how they treat her that it doesn't matter how what she do for them she is a whore so she's upset and she decided to make a video to expose the hypocrisy and how the women who they are born in a Muslim family they claim to be virgins but the fact they are not actually number one buyers for the product it's called virgin again is bought by Muslims you know this is the fact it's bought by Muslims what what the or, or you know what they do like to for more safe and secure uh, the girl she have sex like let us say 1 billion time and then before she get married she go let us say now she's engaged and next week she will have uh, you know uh, the the wedding so now her husband will enter legally upon her so what she do she go to a clinic five minute surgery and she is virgin again and when her husband he take off her his band she say what is that husband oh my Allah, i never saw this before Oof, what is that please turn the light off please please i never saw this before please i can't see it so i'm sorry sorry i'm so shy but this girl she had sex with like 10,000 guys before him and now suddenly she is virgin you know this is the truth uh, <clears throat> you know uh, the video is there I don't know if you have it let me see if I can find it for you in sky in <coughs> in my Facebook hold on let me see. Uh, Facebook. Because <clears throat> I, I, I believe 
I posted once in my videos in Facebook. Uh, no, not this one. Hold on. The version, all of them, they are versions. All of them. Let us see. Mm. Maybe in the front account. Hold on, let me look in. Here we go. I found it. But I will not play it here, you know. Uh, let me post the link for you in Facebook. You can download it, by the way. It's very easy to download it from uh, Facebook. You can search any YouTube uh, video and you can download. Is the link coming? Is the link coming? <clears throat> Do you see it? This is a Muslim convert. She is a Muslim. And she is telling you how Muslim women they stay virgins. Watch it and laugh. Now, do we have any Muslim would like to call us? By the way, we accept virgins and non virgins. It's okay. Any Muslim? <clears throat> Hello? A link is not working. Just go to Islam for Dummies. Go to my page in Facebook and click at my videos. You will find it. The video name is... <clears throat> what is the video name? Canadian Blonde Convert... Let me search this in Google. I'm sure you will find it. Uh, she learned to stay. I don't know that. <clears throat> Let me see the whole title. Hold on. A version, I think, learn to stay version. Yeah. If I if I play it for you, even the language is disgusting. Imagine she said that those Muslim women who they are born into Islam, not like her, she is a convert. They saw more penises, more than she wished to see all her life. I mean, how many penises you wish to see, the lady? And you can tell from her face that she is stupid. I mean, you have to be officially stupid to convert to this cult. Well, if you don't have my Facebook, then don't go. Very easy. Take it easy. Snore. Sleep. How long a Muslim woman can be breadnet? It depends. Depend. If the one who slept with her, Muhammad, she will never be breadnet. Depend. Because as you see, the Prophet, he imagined himself have sex, but in fact, he never did. So it depends. Do we have any Abdul? <clears throat> The title is very stupid. Why, Mr. Isa? Why? Mr. Isa is a Muslim and he thinks the title is a stupid. Why, Isa? Tell us why. You're a prophet. Allah, he made for him a plastic surgery. And install a dish of wisdom in his chest. So why do you think the title is stupid? Are you, are you insulting your prophet, Mr. Isa? Huh? Isa, why, why you don't call me, Isa? Guys, do you think Mr. Isa is going to call me? I have my Skype up. You see it in the screen? DB TV, call me, Isa, and tell me why this is stupid. Isa is a Muslim, but he is insulting his prophet because the title is about what Allah he did to Muhammad. So what is stupid about the title, Mr. Isa? Is it true that Allah he did the plastic surgery for Muhammad? Huh? 
हेलो वर इज द वर इज द ब्रेव ऐसा वट हैपन Is that true that your God Allah He made two surgery, not one, two plastic surgery to Muhammad in order to fix him, and Muhammad still after the two surgery he is not fixed. Anyone? So you know answer suddenly they are dead they they say a word and then the second you show them in the screen what their prophet he said they say to themselves yeah, but he's right this is stupid I'm not going to talk about it a prophet of God his God he made for him to surgery to fix him and he was not fixed yet so why you are saying uh, what is that Muhammad after the plastic surgery is he different from Muhammad before the plastic surgery like you know in the like a few months ago the company the one I you know I have my car from long time ago I have an old car but look like this company is a good company so they they made a recall for my car they said they have like an airbag problem whatever so they recalled my car now did your God Allah recall Muhammad to fix him like what he found the problem with him, what he found huh what exactly is the problem with your prophet to the point Allah he needed to make a plastic surgery for him hello So what he did guys Allah is God but he did not he did not do plastic surgery so what he did read for us read for us it says in front of you Allah he sent to Allah he cannot do plastic surgery obviously he sent his uh, he sent the surgeon he sent the doctor Jabril you see look look, look with me Dr. Jabril Dr. Jabril huh? he came to Muhammad he cut his chest he opened it and he found a piece of a blood is dirty he took it off he threw it away and then he brought back a dish of faith and a dish of wisdom and he filled it up on the chest of the prophet so what do you think obviously Allah cannot do it Jibreel can't do it don't you Muslim you say to us that Allah is God if he wants something to be he say be why he did not say to Muhammad B why he needed to send two angels to do plastic surgery for the chest of the prophet and not only that <clears throat> after they cut his chest not only chest sorry actually they cut from his throat all the way to his balls they brought with them a dish made of gold full of wisdom and belief by the way guys uh, uh I, I, I made a video about how to cook wisdom if you have a microwave I'm going to show you how not to cook how to reheat like sometime you might go like in your you live in a cold area so your faith and your wisdom will not be warm you know so what do you do you take the wisdom you put it in a dish all right and you put it in the microwave have you ever heard of a of a wisdom and faith they come in dishes yeah curse of Allah on me I, you made me fart I have guys now let your God Allah curse me as much as you want this is what the Muslims can do a curse on me okay okay I have guys now Allah did not curse Muhammad and still he have a def defect in his wisdom don't you see why Allah needed to make a surgery to install wisdom in Muhammad unless he is a stupid idiot Muhammad was a crazy man to the point he needed surgery to fix the wisdom Show the Arabic word retarded. Ah, okay, guys, this guy he is supposed to he speak Arabic. Show the Arabic word. Do you know Arabic? He said, Do you know Arabic? Call me and call me. I read it for us in Arabic. I do not know Arabic. What I can do? Why I want to show it to you in Arabic? I don't know Arabic. 
I, I speak Chinese. What do you mean, show me Arabic? This is your Muslim translation. Huh? Is that your Muslim translation? Is that your Muslim website? By the way, guys, how you like my Chinese? Uh, next month, I will be in China, by the way. I told you that, right? But don't worry, I will I will stay in touch. Okay? And I will send, I will send you uh, uh, karate movies from there. I will go to Brosley home, and I will, you know, like, I will uh, get some videotape from there. Isa, is that your Muslim translation? Is that your Muslim website? This is sunnah.com. So why, what's the problem? Huh? What's the problem? What do you mean show me in Arabic? In Arabic is more funny. Here we go, this is in Arabic, here we go. Are you happy now? Isa, are you happy now? Here we go. Oh, my Japanese is not so good, you know, like it's, I'm broken, like broken. Uh, like I know a lot of words in Japanese like sushi I know the sushi language let's say inni arifu i arif arabi shinu hada shinu hal fasaha hadi ya rajal hada rajal ya arif arabi wayya qal lah ya farhan law labbasuka madar tawman wa yacha qal lah ya khanaka so I speak Arabic too now call me and read for me and let us laugh. Are you proud, Isa, about what it says in Arabic? I mean, even it's more funny. فرج سقفي وأنا بمكة فنزل جبريل عليه السلام ففرج صدري ثم غسله بماء زمزم ثم جاء بتصت من ذهب ممتلئ حكمة وإيمانا فأفرغها في صدري I wish they speak Arabic they will die from laughing أبيد الصهاينة يقول رسولك هذا عميل صهيوني ممتاز هذا القرآن كله ما فيها ولا كلمة فلسطين guys isn't it Allah himself he is saying he is saying I am a Zionist isn't it the Quran says that the Holy Land is the land of the Jews? Allah, he forgot even to mention the word Palestine and Palestinian. And the Quran, chapter 5, verse 21, it says the land is the land of the Jews. So your Allah is a Zionist? Who is a brave Abdul? You see, anyone, he, he kicked the ass of the Muslim right away, they accuse him to be a Jew. You are a Zionist. Name me whatever you want to care. A shoe of a Zionist better than your nation. Look at you. You make speeches. Nothing more. The best of you is the one who fought more. What's wrong with the Zionist? Are you better than them? The Israeli, they are ready. Their technology is in the moon. Those are the Zionists. Where are you? You are you are busy with the with the fatwa about should we drink milk with my fiance? A woman she called the sheikh, she asked him that when I take off my clothes in the front of the fish tank, the fish they start shaking. So what I should do? Shake. So the sheikh he said, ah, are they shaking like so much? She said, Yes. And he said, and he was drinking water like crazy, and he's so sweating and so hot. Obviously, she is a whore. He said, Sister, Sister, Auzubillah, Auzubillah, look like those fish, they have a genie inside them, and they are looking at you in a dirty way when you are taking off your clothes. So I advise you, Sister, to take off your clothes, not in the front of the fish tank. And then she said, But this is the only room I have. And the Sheikh now, he had to find a solution. He said, Okay. I bingo, I got it. What about you cover the fish tank with the blanket, sister, so they will not look at your beautiful body? He said that to her, beautiful body. What the heck? 
So now what we have, we have the wisdom of the Muslims versus the wisdom of the Zionists. The Zionists are making satellite. The Zionists, they have nukes. The Zionists, they are scaring even China and nobody dare to fight with them. And you are busy with the women. She took off her clothes in the front of the fish tank and the fish is shaking. What, what, what do you mean the fish is shaking? Do you think the fish, the fish is masturbating? Bad boy Abdul, your imagination is amazing. The same as the imagination of the Prophet Muhammad. Unbelievable. The fish is masturbating to see your sister taking off her clothes. Why? Even Muslim fish is dirty. Here we go. This is a Muslim fish in a Muslim house, and they are masturbating. And you are talking about the Zionist? You idiot. <laughs> look look first of all he said to us show us in Arabic now he know I speak Arabic so now he is not talking about Arabic no more you notice that in the beginning he thought I am NOT an Arab so he said let us see we say to him it doesn't say that in Arabic show me in Arabic this is what they do you don't know Arabic they say to you oh do you not know Arabic so you understand wrongly brother the second you know that you know Arabic, they say to you, uh, you have a wrong understanding in English. And your English, by the way, is bad. Your English is funny. Go learn English first. If you don't speak Arabic, they say to you, go learn Arabic first. Any Abdul? Don't use bad language in the text. Be careful. Otherwise, we will block you. Be careful, please. Any Abdul? Who is Abdul here when I call me? Kill women who are not virgins in Bible. Okay, the Bible says so. So what's the problem with you? Call me, call me, and tell me about it. What you? What's his name? What's his name? Um, uh, Mukhan, Mukhan. What about you? Call me. I challenge you, guys. Do you think this guy he he dared to call me and quote for me this verse from the Bible? It says, "Call non virgins." Call me. Even that you don't you don't dare to call. Let us laugh. Who is the Muslim he dared to call? I have a mental disease. Why did did Allah send the angel to chuck to chop my chest and install a dish of a brain? Don't you see, Abdul? It's your prophet who have a mental issue. Otherwise, why Allah is putting a dish of wisdom in his head? Obviously, he has zero wisdom. Let me ask you: When you go to fill up your car, gas. When you do it, you do it when it's full or when it's empty. Obviously, you do it when it's empty. Why Allah is filling Muhammad with wisdom? Because he have none. Guys, does it say they are full of wisdom? And then he poured in my chest. The wisdom of Muhammad is in his chest. Oof, no wonder he have big boobs. If man, you know, I thought when women they have big breasts has nothing to do with education and faith and wisdom, but now I now I know why some women they have big breasts, mashallah. Obviously, because they have a lot of wisdom and believe. Your God Allah, He installed the wisdom and the knowledge and the faith in the breast of Muhammad. So if we milk your prophet, no milk will come, but wisdom and faith. I wonder how the nipples of the prophet look like because of this. Do you think they look normally or they are like wisdom nipples? Like, do you think if you suck the nipples of your prophet, you will get a lot of wisdom too? Can we milk wisdom from Muhammad? Catholic is talking from the old Roma religion. Ah, okay, here we go. He speak English now. <laughs> I am not a Catholic. And the Catholic did not take anything from the old religion, you idiot. What, like what, like what? Tell me, what, what, the, what the Catholic they took from the Roman? I will change the topic for you with you, Isa. Isa is a smart Abdul, and he is very convincing. Isa, what the Catholic he, they took from the Roman? Tell me, tell me, brother. Tell me, I'm waiting for you. It is your God who took from the Roman, not the Catholic. 
Isn't it your God? He mentioned the crucifixion in the Quran as a punishment of a God. All of us, we knew that the crucifixion is a Roman pagan punishment. And Allah, he adopted. Is that correct? Why Allah is taking the punishment of the Roman and making it his own official punishment? Any Abdul? I will tell you another punishment your God he took from the Roman. Is it true that your God he said, I will insert in your anus chains? Abdul, is that true? Have you ever heard of God he insert chains in the anus of people? Hello? Allah will insert a chain in the anus? That's amazing. No, I'm not a Coptic. Guys, don't don't give definition of who I am. Only Allah knows who I am. <laughs> Guys, look at this. Allah, Allah, He inserted in the anus of the Abdul a chain. What kind of God this God is? And this chain is going to be inserted inside the anus of the brother Abdul and Allah will extract the chain from his nose if 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 this is very I mean this is like a horror sexual movie is that correct Abdul ثم في سلسلة ذراعها سبعون ذراعا فأسلكوا and look guys the number of the chapter look at this look at this unbelievable how sexual it is even the chapter number is sexual 69 i mean this is a miracle you say to me there's no miracle in the quran the chapter is speaking about inserting something in the anus is a chapter number 69 how you explain to me such a miracle any infidel can explain to me this miracle Look, it is 69, and Allah will insert a big, he use a chain in the anus of the Muslim. Explain to me now, how such a miracle happen unless it's from God? Hello? Are you there, Isa? And not only that, if you go to the interpretation and the explanation of the Prophet, peace upon him, he says that this chain, guys, is so big. Eesh. To the point, to the point. Why I want to show you what the point? Let me go. Let me show you the interpretation, man. I mean, why I'm doing this? Why? Why? Hey, guys, I have tea in the front of me. Honest to God, I did not even drink it. It's cold now. What I can do? I cannot leave the microphone. Who is going to insert the chain if I leave the microphone? I cannot. All right, let's go. <clears throat> Sixty-nine thirty-two. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh boy. All right. So 69, Ibn Kathir, let's go to Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir is the favorite scar for the Muslim, that's why I chose him, you know. Not because I like him, this guy is an idiot too, anyway. So let us go to 69. 69. Uh, here we go. Allahu Akbar. All right. This is six, the 69 from 25. All right, let's see about Allah inserting. Look, 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 look at this. And fast him on him with the chain, where of the length is 70 cubit. Kabil Ahbar said, every ring of this will be equal to the entire amount of iron found in the world. What? Every ring of this chain will go inside the anus. Have all equal iron to all the iron in the world? Like how many tons? How many tons? How many billion tons? Abdul. This is how big this chain is? Every ring, brother, every ring in this chain is equal to all the iron in the world. Ish. 
I wish I can get one ring of this. Imagine how much money I can make from it if I sold it in the junkyard. Abdul, are you really conversed with the junkyard uh, project? Must be true, my brother. Must be true. The story is not over yet. The story is not. Do you think the story is over? Look at this horror. Fasten him. Fasten him. Hold on. This this is need a bad bad background music. Sorry, I have to do it this way because this is kind of like hell. We have a guy. His name is Muhammad Ali, and now Allah will punish him for playing boxing. will be entered into his buttocks and pulled out of his mouth then oh my friend then oh my friend I cannot imagine what then will happen they will be arranged in the chain just like Loctus are arranged in a stick commercial time if you like to buy a barbecue buy the barbecue of Hamida Hamida barbecue is the best come with sauce and free of garlic because Allah he hate garlic but he likes sauce praise Allah for the sauce we say death to garlic we continue Unbelievable. Do you see what's happening here? This is Quran. This is the Quran. We continue. I don't know what to say. It was reported by Ibn Abbas that he said it will run into his behind until it is brought out of his two nostrils so it will not be able to stand on in his feet commercial if you have a problem to stand in your feet the shoes of Islam is the best shoes first of all they take you nowhere for you obviously you cannot move with it for it is fixed by the gum of Allah and regarding the gum the gum of Allah is the best because you can put it under the foot of your husband and your husband he cannot leave the house until you take the gum off his feet we back to the topic unbelievable I mean this is too much this is science this is all what happened to the Anas. A chain made by Allah, and every ring of this chain is equal to all the iron in this earth. Obviously, this is a true story. Hey, Abdul, how big your Anas is? I, you know, just like to discuss about it. I mean, I know it's a dirty topic, but can you take a look? Can you take a selfie? Abdul, can you take a selfie? How big your anus to the point that Allah He can insert inside your anus chain and every ring of this chain is equal to all the iron in the world. Don't you think that this is too much? I mean, even Horebutar did not do that. Hello? You know, I start believing that Horebutar was a really true story. Compared to this, if there is any Muslim here, you have an objection. Do you see how stupid it is to be a Muslim? 
Allah will insert a chain in the anus of the Abdul is it this is a sexual punishment Muslims be honest is that a sexual punishment and why his anus what about his uh, penis hello what if he's a gay he might like it if he is a gay he might say but more but more hello <laughs> what a stupid religion <laughs> oh <coughs> any Abdul who is a brave Muslim here What's wrong with you Muslims? Each time we change the topic just for your sake and we end with dead end. Here we go, now we are in the anus. Allah will insert a chain in the anus and he will extract it from your nostrils. Nostrils. Just two lines before it says from his mouth. Now I'm confused, is it the nose or it is the mouth? Hello? You can call a friend there, by the way. If you wanna, if you wanna call me, you can call with a friend. You can call any friend you want. I don't know what do you laugh or cry on your stupidity. My stupidity? Why? I am the one who told you that I am Allah, and I'm going to insert a chain in your anus. Hello. Hello. I am the stupid, right? Who is the stupid, me or the one who believed that God will make his penis endless? Who is the one who believe in that? Huh? It's not the, in the Quran? No, it is in the Quran, you fool. Do you see how dumb you are? It is in the Quran. The Quran says that Allah will insert in your anus 70 cupid chain. It's in the Quran. Do you want to challenge me? Abdul, do you want to challenge me, brother? Let us go to the Quran. Here we go. Supposedly now he's being smart. This is not in the Quran. Are you sure? <laughs> Here we go. ثم في سلسلة زراعها سبعون ذراعا فأسلكوا. Hello. It's Quran. Even the verse, the chapter number is sixty-nine. Hello. CP loved his talk. Ask him if he is a gay. Oh, hold on, hold on. What about you? Call me and ask me the question about gays. Let us talk about it. Let us face it. Let us face it, Abdul. Do you dare to talk about it? Who is the one who put eyeliner three times a day? What his name? Christian Prince or Muhammad? Who is the one who piss sitting like women? Huh? Who is the one who wanna be red head blondie girl? Who is the one who kiss men under their belly? Who is the man who go inside the shirt of a man? Who is the man who promised you in heaven images of men and women to have sex with them? Are you there? Let me show you your gay prophet what he said about gays. Do you know that your prophet he have a gay in his house? Hello? Who is a Muslim want to challenge me about that? And the question is, what was the gay doing in the house of the Prophet? I will give you three options. The Prophet and the gay, they used to play hide and seek. Number two, the one who missed it, he spanked first. Number three, find me and hit me. What, 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 the, what, the, what the gay was doing in the house of the Prophet? Hmm. Let us see.
Okay, let us see. Gay, huh? Mm. Let's see who's the gay. I'm going to get you a hadith will make you feel so proud about your prophet. Very proud. In a second. Abdul, read with me, please. Please. Is that a promise of a man he is a gay or a straight man? Jami or Turmudi. Ali narrated that the Messenger of Allah S A W S F M E G said, Indeed, I like it when he says indeed. Unbelievable. This means this is for sure, brother. It's for sure. Indeed, in paradise, there is a market which there is no buying nor selling, except which means there is buying and selling, except to what? The only product there is for images of men and women. Okay. So whenever a man, look, 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 a man, you know what a man mean? Who is the customer? A man. Who is the customer? A man. So whenever a man desire an image, he enter it. Desire what? To for sex. Now the images are images of what? Images of men and women. Now, who is the gay who promised you to have sex with men in heaven? Images of who? Men and women. So whenever a man so the customer is what is a man what the man will do if he desire an image he enter it to have sex with it but the images are images of what images of men and women hello brother this is your heaven who is the gay Who is the gay? Oh, no, 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 no. In Christian countries, we don't have gays. Those are not Christians. In Islamic countries, your prophet is a gay. And don't you see? There's a huge difference between the prophet himself is a gay, so his followers, all of them, they are gays. What do you mean in a Christian country? I can show you right now a video made in Saudi Arabia that 45% of the population of the city of Jeddah in Saudi Arabia have sexual relationship male to male. 45%. What do you say? And as you see, your prophet is a gay. Otherwise, why he promised you an image of a man? If you desire to have sex with the man, you enter it and you have sex with it. Unless he is a gay. <clears throat> Nobody marry gays. Those who marry gays, they are not Christians. He can call himself a priest. He can call. But you Muslims, you have no problem to have a gay and not only marry to him, but to have him as an imam. Do you want me to show you the hadith? Let me show you. Let us go. A gay imam? Oops. For us, the Bible is so clear about gays. Okay, you know what? Show me one verse in the Quran that says that those who they are gays, they will go to hell. What is the punishment of gays in the Quran before we go to the hadith? Any Muslim can show me? Guys, do you know what the punishment of gays in the Quran for the, the for, for the gays? If there is somebody is a gay, spank him. What the heck? What? Are you sure? 
Yes, brother, spank him. Allahu Akbar. Eesh. The geese will love it, man. Is that true? That if there is somebody is a gay, you are asked to spank him? Muslims? Who's a Muslim wanna wanna say no? Huh? Who is the Muslim wanna say no? Any Abdul? <clears throat> Guys, read with me the punishment of gays in the Quran. And if two of you, uh, this is for men, they committed adultery of horse homosexuality, intercourse, punish them both with insult and beating them with sandals. Let me get my sandal. <laughs> this is Quran. This is Islam. The punishment of a homo in the Old Testament is death. The punishment of a homo in the Quran is beat them with sandals, spank them. You spank a gay with sandal, he will like it. He will say more. He's getting excited. So what? What's wrong with you, Muslims? Hello? Show me, show me where it's forbidden. Show me. Here we go. This is the only verse in the Quran speaking about homosexuality. Guys, I challenge this Abdul to show me the verse that says that homosexual is forbidden. I want to see it. Show me. Here we go. I showed you where the Quran speak about homosexual. Do you have something else to add? Educate us. You beat them with sandals. A man is having sex with a man in Islam. The, the punishment is sandal. Uh, what's your name, Abraham? Be honest with me. Did ever somebody did beat you with sandals before? Who is here a Muslim and he was before insulted by sandals? Be honest with me. Come on, tell the story. Come on, tell us what happened. What happened? There is no punishment. I mean, it's, imagine, guys, this is a stupid religion. The Muslim, they say to you that the Prophet, he ordered to put them to death. Right? But the Quran says something different. Either this is something is added later, or Muhammad, he changed his mind later, for he was accused that he's a gay. Because Muhammad later, he said so, but the Quran here, as you see, he did not say so. But because Muhammad was accused that he is a gay, actually, wait, in my coming book, I will show you guys that all the companions of Muhammad and his families are homo. Who, who want to get my coming book? Let us see how many of you. Give me one if you want to get my book. Who want to get my book about Islam and sex? By the way, you have to be six years and older to buy it. Because as you know, it has to be halal. According to Islam, if you are six years old girl, you are mature and you are a woman. So you have to be a woman at least. At the age of six years. Five, you can be engaged, you know. Huh? The miracle of what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a Muslim here is posting something. Hold on. The miracle, the miracle of four one in the Holy Quran. I missed that one. Let me see what is that. Oof. Guys, I cannot. <coughs> I apologize. We have to stop here. I have to look at the miracle of four one. What is that miracle of four one? I never heard of this before. <coughs> oh, you mean the Pharaoh? <laughs> Abdul, Abdul, let me show you how stupid your Quran. The Quran mentioned the Pharaoh. Which Pharaoh? 
your stupid Quran, he thought there's a man, his name is Pharaoh. But Pharaoh is not the name of a person. So who is Pharaoh? Hello? Pharaoh and his wife. And the, the wife have a name, the Pharaoh have no name because his name is Pharaoh. <laughs> so the stupid Muhammad, he thought that Pharaoh is the name. But there is no such a person, his name is Pharaoh. Now, as long you are talking about the Pharaoh and Moses, how your prophet, he said that uh, the, the Pharisees, he came to Moses. Huh? At the time of Moses, there was no such a thing, brother. <laughs> oh boy, who is a Muslim want to call me and tell me about the miracle of the Pharaoh? Right now, right here. I love to talk about it. You made me excited, brother. Anyone? Any Abdul? Who is a Muslim wanna call me and tell me about the miracle of the Quran? Anyone you choose. Any Muslim? See potatoes. They know that it's stupid. They knew it's false. I uh, Abdul, I have a book. I have two books about the miracles of the Quran, brother. One is called The Deception of Allah, and the other one is called Quran and science in depth both of them they expose what it's called the miracles of Allah the scientific miracles and people when they read them they die from laughing now I want a Muslim who is proud about the scientific miracle of the Quran to call me and choose any miracle of his choice from those you call them miracles people here do you think any Muslim he dare to do so do you think any Muslim he dared to call me right now, right here, and to show us one of the miracles? Or they are a bunch of potatoes, and they knew it's a hocus, and they knew if they mention any of them, they will laugh at them. You can choose anyone, the Pharaoh as an example, you just mentioned it, but just call me, I want somebody to talk to me, and I will make you read, so we can laugh together. Who is a Muslim going to do it? Who is the brave Muslim want to show us a miracle in the Quran? Anyone of your choice. Hello? Where is the... Where am, I mean, there's the millions of miracles in the Quran. You don't want to show us one? You see, guys, how flexible I am? I move with the Muslims. They want to talk about the Bible, call me, so we can laugh. They don't want to call. Uh, uh, and by the way, I am I'm going to show you how stupid what you are saying from your Quran. Even though you will ask me about the Bible. <laughs> what a bunch of idiots. Every Muslim is an idiot until he proved the opposite. And I never saw one of them proving the opposite. Who is a Muslim want to do so? Huh? Who is a Muslim want to win one of my books for free? You pay only for shipping and handling. Any Abdul? Hello? Call us and show us a true miracle in the Quran. And I promise in front of everybody, I will send you, actually, you know what? Even free, free shipping and handling. What do you want more? Here we go. You pay for nothing if you can show us a true miracle in the Quran. Who want to do it? Cowards, potatoes. So you know it's a lie, you know it's fake, you know it's a fiction, you know it's a stupid. This is why you don't want to call, otherwise, why you don't? Don't you want to show those Christians? And thousands and thousands of people who will watch this video later, the miracle of the Quran. 
prove to me miracle in the corrupt Bible. Okay, I will show you the miracle of the corrupt. Guys, did he say prove to me the miracle of the corrupt Bible? Bible? Be my witness. Abdul, he said, prove to me the miracle in the corrupt Bible. Here we go. This is not my statement. Be my witness. This is the Muslim Abdul. He said that. Read with me, brother. Give me a miracle in the corrupt Bible. Okay, let me show you one. Here we go. In the corrupt Bible, friend, my friend, it says that women, they have a sperm and it's coming from their ribs. What is your answer for that? Hmm? Is that a corrupt or this is a true? Do you agree that women, they have a sperm coming from their ribs? Abdul, are you there? Do you really agree that your wife, peace upon her, she have a sperm coming from her boobs? May Allah bless her boobs. Hello? Here we go. This is the corrupt Bible. Obviously, it's corrupt. What kind of God? He says such a stupid thing. He cannot be God. Not even the guy who works in the grocery store, he will say that. Chapter 86, verse number 7. Muslim women, I think this is only for Muslim women because only Muslim women, they have a sperm in their boobs. In the upper side of their ribs, sorry. Any Abdul? Or what about your prophet saying that the sun sit in the murky water? According to science, it's true. They found the sun sitting in murky water. <clears throat> what do you think? And by the way, when the Muslim he speak about the corrupt Bible, do you know what he's talking about? He speak about the corrupt Bible of Allah. So the Muslim are showing us again that Islam is a stupid religion, because according to Islam, the Bible is the Bible of Allah. So he's accusing his God that his God could not protect his book. <laughs> Unbelievable, stupid religion. Donkeys, donkeys in, donkeys out. Right. If this religion, if this God is a true God, he will not allow anyone to corrupt his book because according to Islam, the Quran says that the Torah and the Injil, which means the gospel, is the book of Allah, chapter 3, verse number 3. Read with me carefully, brother. This is the Muslim translation. It is he who sent down the step by step, step by step. Mm. Step by step, I send the pizza in truth okay the book confirming what is between their hands not what before it and he sent the torah to moses and the gospel to jesus so the muslim abdul saying that the torah of allah and the gospel of isa are corrupt that is a clear evidence that allah is a fufu and anyone can spank him What do you mean not corrupt? Show me the show me the book of Isa. Show me, show me. What is the book of Isa? You just said that it's corrupt. You idiot. Are you are you stupid or what? A second ago you said it's corrupt. What is the book of Isa? Allah He sent the gospel to Isa. What is the book of Isa? I want to see it. What the Muslims are confirming to us that Allah He sent one hundred twenty four thousand prophet. And he sent with them 124,000 books, but all of them, they are corrupt. I mean, do you see how serious this God is? Eesh, eesh. Imagine you hire a librarian <laughs> and you tell him, listen, this is the key for the library. And inside the library, there's 124,000 book. And we come back later and we find there's only one book inside the library. And supposedly, this librarian is Allah. <laughs> A stupid religion. 124,000 books are lost. Your God is the best librarian ever. And only one is preserved. And hold on. 
like when the Muslim he said to us the Quran is preserved then we read in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim that the Quran was not preserved as an example as an example we will go to the book of Sahih only <clears throat> the book of Sahih says that the Quran was eaten by a goat real goat real goat but it's a holy goat read with me you see how much preserved the Quran is the verse of stoning and breastfeeding for adult. What? Quran used to have a breastfeeding for adult. I want to convert to Islam, man. Eh? This is what? Allah He taught Muslims to do breastfeeding for adult. Yes, ten time. Ten time. This is very open-minded religion, brother. Group sex. Your wife, she can share her boobs because it's a sec it's an open community, brother. We share together. We share vagina. We share boobs. Whatever you want it. So Allah, He sent a verse of stoning, and verses of breastfeeding for adult ten times. I mean, I wonder why not nine. Eh, Muslims are so hungry, even though they are sucking a breast, have no milk. <laughs> I wonder what I'm sucking exactly. And the paper was under my below below when the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death. And a teen tam sheep came in and ate it. Look at this Zionist sheep. Disgusting. She must send by the Jews. A sheep ate the Quran. And now those verses are gone. Who is the Muslim when I recite for us the verses eaten by the goat? Anyone here? Oh, sorry, I have the image of my book in the screen. Sorry, sorry. It's okay, come on. Make it a commercial break. What's wrong with you? You cannot handle to see a commercial product? You watch a movie, they put for you in the middle of the movie hamburger. I mean, come on. We have the right to put hamburger in the middle of the screen. So, my brother, look at this. How beautiful it is. Allah versus the goat. Allah versus the goat. Who won? The goat. Who lost? Allah. I challenged the Muslim to show us the verses of stoning and breastfeeding. I want to read them. Hello? So this is the preserved book? Goat versus Allah? Who wrote the Bible? People wrote the Bible. What's wrong with that? Guys, who wrote the Bible? Who wrote the Quran? Did Allah wrote the Quran? Did Allah send the Quran written by the hand of Allah? No. Stupid idiot. Did Muhammad write the Quran? No. According to you Muslims, it says that the Quran you have in your hand is the recitation of Hafs, not even the writing of Hafs. Where is the Quran of Muhammad? Where is the Quran of Muhammad? Does not exist. We have a guy, he never met Muhammad. And he was accused by a Muslim that he is a scam and he is a fraud. This is where you get the Quran from. Who is a Muslim willing to call me? Nobody. All right. Uh, I wish I can stay longer, but I have to get back and work in my coming book. I need to finish it. My coming book is going to be priceless, and I believe that number one buyers for it is going to be the Muslims for very simple reasons it's about sex the Muslims buy anything about sex this is why they are Muslims the New Testament is unknown authors I challenge you to call me and to prove it guys the New Testament is unknown author okay who is the author of the Quran 
I will show you that even the Quran, even your scholars, they say who is the author of the New Testament. Call me, call me, it is love. Hello? I did not give it a name yet, you know. It's going to be about sex, but I'm not sure really. I might get it, I, you know, the... Uh, um, I was thinking about the gate who the, the goat who ate the six uh, verses but I said no that's not good you know I will come with a name any Abdul the God who made a surgery for his a prophet to give him wisdom look like he is not successful with his prophet because his prophet says stupid things after and before the surgery and look like he need to make a surgery for every Abdul in the world for obviously all of them they are stupid Matthew who mark who Luke who that's a good thing call me and I will tell you mark who you idiot even your scholars books it says mark who and look who call me and John who Donkeys, you know, Muslims are donkeys. I'm serious. You Muslims are a bunch of donkeys because somebody he said to you, Who is who is John? Right? Okay, let me ask you, who's Isa? Who is Saleh? Who is the Qurnain? Who is Muhammad? You do not know who are they? Muhammad was born four years after his father's death. If we ask a Muslim, there is a prophet, his name is Salih. Who is Salih? They don't know. Salih who? Zul Qurnayn who? Yasin who? Huh? Qarun. Who is Qarun? Who is a Pharaoh? Now call me and I will tell you the name of each one of them and what they do for a living and what the name of their father. What do you think? Just to show you that the one who said to you those things is an idiot. And not only that, I will show you that those are the messengers of Allah according to the Quran. Anyone there? From the Quran, I will show you that those are messengers of Allah. Cowards. Potatoes. Have you ever heard of somebody is born four years after his father's death? Imagine you divorce your wife for a year ago and she call you and she say, Honey, come to the hospital to pay the bill. I just delivered a boy. What, 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 why I have to pay the bill? You are, I divorced you. Stupid idiot, this is your son. What are you talking about? I divorced you four years ago. Since then, I never saw you. Don't you know that the Prophet said that a woman, she can be pregnant for many years? Just to cover the story of Muhammad, they made the Muslim woman, she can be pregnant up to 10 years. Is that true, Muslims? The Muslim woman, she can be pregnant up to 10 years? Why? She's an elephant? What happened? Hello? Don't talk about donkeys. You are a Muslim. You are the last one to talk about donkeys. The last name of Muhammad is dogs. His wife, her last name is donkeys. So imagine this. The prophet Muhammad, the dogs, he married from Zainab, the donkeys. What a nice family. So why you are calling me donkey? Isn't it your prophet last name is dogs? Or I'm insulting? Hello? I'm serious. The last name of Muhammad is dogs. Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Qusay ibn Kilab. He married to Zainab bin to Jahsh. Do you know what Jahsh means in Arabic? Donkey. So his last name is dogs. The last name of the wife is, do is, is donkeys. Nice. I mean, perfect. I'm not sure how dogs can have sex with donkeys, but it happened. Any Abdul?
do you see why the Muslim don't call me? Because they knew whatever they say is going to use against them in the court of a Christian prince. Try. Do your best. Any word you say to me, you will pay for it. Try it. Call me. Hello? And you know the funny, the Muslim, they say the Bible is corrupt, but they found the name of their prophet in the corrupt Bible. <laughs> Unbelievable. And the Abdul. I love the Abduls. I want to grow Abdul in my backyard, but they are not allowed in me. The city is very tricky about the growing terrorist in backyard. Uh Aren't you afraid that my tongue will get it twisted? My, my, my friend Abdul, my tongue has nothing to do with what I'm saying. I, I wrote it already in my books. So you have to think about my fingers. <laughs> Aren't you worried that Allah will twist your tongue? <laughs> Stupid idiots. What about your prophet? He said, if I fabricated word of god allah will cut my artery and then we find that this is exactly what happened to muhammad is that true is that true that muhammad he said if i fabricated quran may allah cut my artery and then we found that muhammad he died by his artery is cut off That's deep. Aren't you afraid, my friend? Oh, wow. Chapter, look at this again. 69. I mean, we are stuck with 69 today. The anus of Muhammad is really in pain. Look at this. Let us go to 69. What the chapter is saying here, Allah, he said, that if the messenger of Allah he fabricated words huh? if the messenger were to invent any saying in our name we should certainly size him by his right hand and we should certainly then cut off his artery of his heart do you see it Abdul do you see it now let us go to the hadith. This is exactly what happened to Muhammad. Do you see it? Guys, do you see it? Aisha, she said, the prophet in his element in which he died he used to say not once not twice many times oh aisha i still feel the pain caused by the food i ate at khaybar and at this time i feel as if my orta is being cut off from that poison are you there, Abdul? So aren't you afraid, my friend, to happen to you what happened to Muhammad? He said, if I fabricated something, Allah will cut my artery. And then Muhammad, he died by his orta is being cut off. What do you say? Even your Quran witness that your prophet is a scam. Are you there? Hello? Hello? 
It's me you were looking for. Guys, sorry, I cannot think no more. Allah, Allah, he sweats my tongue. <laughs> Let me read the hadith for you, sorry. The prophet in the element of death, he said, he used to say, Oh, Aisha, Allah, cut, he sweat my tongue. Hello? A Muslim saying to me, are you worried that Allah will uh, twist your tongue? Well, I'm worried about your prophet when he said that Allah he twist his penis. Do you want to see it? Who is the Muslim want to see how Allah he twisted the penis of Muhammad? Hello? Look like Allah is a, a professional twister. He twists anything is around, man. Eh? That's deep. Unbelievable. Oof. I, I know, I know. They will not they will not call me because it's me. You see, if this if this program run by someone who know nothing about Islam, trust me, they will be calling him like crazy. But as long as it's me, as you see, if somebody call is going to be a mistake, and after that he will sing a song, it's called Never Again, Never Again, Never Again. Never, 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 never again. La 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 la. Never again was a stupid decision to talk to him. Any Abdul? All right, guys. Uh, if you are, in, who is new here? Who is first time listening to us? Who is here first time? Give me, give me one. If you are first time, except uh, Vivek, uh, don't give me one one because your name is already uh, Vivek uh, one eleven. I mean, what the point? Who is here for first time? I think you know sometimes people you need to encourage them to do something. So let me let me be let, let me pause the first one. All right, hold on. <clears throat> if you are first time here, post one. Here we go. Always the first one have to encourage. Like you know, you have to jump in the water first, then they would jump. Uh, Fifi is first one, first time. Okay, who's else? Only one person is first time. All, all, all of you, the rest are addicted. Unbelievable. What? Only one person is in you. It's hard to believe. It's like a miracle. Does the Quran say Muslims will go to hell? Yes, the Quran says the Muslims will do to hell. But but do you want me, my friend? To talk about everything in one time i mean just save it for later yes the muslims will go to hell according to quran what we can say quran says all muslim will go to hell but don't worry don't worry allah will take them to hell but temporarily eh, he will do barbecue for them like for a couple of thousand of years only any abdul Any Abdul. If you are first time here, don't forget to subscribe. If you are second time and subscribe, don't ask me why. Because Allah He just gave me twisted wisdom and He twisted my tongue. So unsubscribe, please. So if you are already subscribed, don't forget to unsubscribe because the Muslims they just curse me and my tongue is it is it is it I can't say it. It, my my tongue now is it tested tested tested. I mean, look at the Muslims. Even when they pray for you, they pray for your death. May Allah freeze the blood in your nerves. Go go on YouTube and see how many prayers the Muslim they say to each other. May Allah freeze the blood in your bare. You know, actually, there's a guy. He is breaking tables. He's praying to the Shia. He's praying to destroy the Shia. May Allah freeze the blood in you. And you know, he start hitting everything around him, start breaking the chairs, start breaking the pictures, start breaking everything around him. It's a mad nation. Mad nation. Can you tell me, does Islam have concept of a trinity? Yeah, we can talk about it, but maybe next Sunday, uh, Fifi, ask me about the same question. Because the, uh, to show you what Islam teach about the Trinity, uh, need a lot of uh, time. Uh, 
However, I have a lot of videos already in YouTube, but let us do it in the second time because already now is what? It's eight o'clock. Wow. Oh. Everything in Islam actually is based on the Trinity. Allah have three names the Muslim they start with, just to give you some spice. Allah names have 99 names. It is the multiply of the age of Jesus to three. Three X 33. The Muslims, in order to do evolution, he have to do everything in three times. A Muslim, when he start a prayer, he have to recite three times. A Muslim, when he want to take an oath, he have to repeat it three times. A Muslim, when he greet a Muslim, he have to do it the same as Muhammad. He have to say Assalamu Alaikum three times, which is stupid. If a Muslim he divorce his wife to approach the final with no return divorce, it is a three time. Everything in Islam is three time. Do we have any Muslim? How are you, Mr. Endalus? Any Muslim would like to call us? I mean, isn't it stupid that a guy he come to your house and he said to you, "Assalamu alaikum," and you say, "Okay, peace to you." Then he say again, "Assalamu alaikum." What the heck with you? I said, I just said, oh, "Peace to you," and he say again, "Assalamu alaikum." Why? Why I have to say "Assalamu alaikum" three times? And the Russia, he is calling us a crusade. I will be honored to be a crusade, my friend. If that make you upset, I am one of them. Ha ha ha. Any Abdul? Hello? All right, guys. So we will meet again this coming Sunday. I apologize, really, uh, because I have to go to the court yard i mean the bathroom i mean <clears throat> uh, allah he switched uh, allah he uh, switched my tongue okay i have to go somewhere so sorry guys I, I should not say that but because allah he switched my car my i can't say i mean see what allah did look like it's now start start my tongue start like uh, saying stupid things like i, I what, what i want to say the tongue is not moving with me i mean <laughs> okay i uh let me let me try again. Thith kebab, Allahu Akbar. Okay, now it's working. See, because you said Allahu Akbar, now the tongue is not a switch no more. The curse of Allah is gone. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> ah, thank you, my friends. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. I hope you did enjoy your time with us today. And as you see, the Muslims are a bunch of potatoes and none of them dare to call us because they knew Islam is a stupid religion. I'm not insulting when I say Muslims are potatoes, but they are. Anyone who believed that God will make his penis endless, he is a stupid idiot. Anyone believe that God will give him a woman, her ass is one mile, he is a donkey. Anyone who believed that God, he will make him 70 years orgasm is an idiot, perverted minded person. Anyone who believe that God will make you swim inside a vagina is not only stupid, he is a diver vagina. Anyone who believe that the prophet of God, as God sent him a dish of shish kebab, and after he ate it, he got the power of 40 men for sex. He is officially a donkey with certificate. Thank you very much. I see you again this coming Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Don't forget to bring your friends with you and watermelon. And we will explain to you later why watermelon is required. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye.